Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. I'm Mike. I'm Dan. And this is the Board Game Rundown, and we're excited because we are continuing our top 50 games of all time. Yes. There is no debate. These are the best 50 games of all time. Hands down. Correct. No discussion needed. Yes. The definitive list. Yep. Where we uh, each bring objective. our own 50. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> very happy with this 10. Of highly objective. Eh, I mean, Some they're not as good games. as the previous 10. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I think Bob did it wrong. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, he's just <laughs> saying it's 31 through 40 instead of 40 through 31. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah, yeah. so this is 40 through 31. Sure. Uh, we had a little trouble when discussing what to name this episode. <laughs> 31 through 40. The numbers go. Numbers are <laughs> hard. We saw Tim shut down. I, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, no, guys. Uh, so, yes, this is a continuation uh, of videos, or videos, games that we absolutely love. And uh, this list has been an absolute blast to make. I'm really happy we're doing it. And uh, do we just get right into it? Yeah, are but there? first, make sure you like, right. subscribe, share this video. And at the end, you know, Pay attention to what we're saying, okay? Because we want to know which of your of what we picked, which one is your favorite? Oh yeah, and whose of those favorites is your favorite? Wow, did you Uh, see that thunder just get stolen? Because that was your thunder from last week's episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say I I remembered that from last week. Right. I wanted to reiterate that this week. Yeah, that was a long time ago. (laughs) And even though this video may not be out for another two weeks, we are a mosquito's toenail away from two thousand subs. Yeah. So hopefully by the time this releases. Yeah, 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 we're, like, like we're going to be there, we're totally there by the time. 500 by the time. Y- y- right, yeah. We'll be yeah. at 3,000. Totes so. and the goats. Just like, subscribe, ring the bell, do those things. All those things. We want some more love, um, but we want your feedback. If you're interested in like, how we made our lists, go back to the last one, 50 yeah. through 41. Pub we talk about a few, how we made it. A few caveats. Then we there. tweaked them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Except um, Tim that went way overboard with the pub meeple. Oh, I went crazy, crazy. but I, I'm just obsessed with 400 games, what, three times? No, the third time I did 140 games. Okay. Okay. That still takes a long time. It's still oh, yeah. hours. Yeah. It's a really long time. Just for this list, I, I slammed 70 games in there, and it's still like, you know, it took oh, yeah. multiple well, hours. Well, after I did like everything twice, and then Mike's like, why don't you just do the games you think will be in your top 50? And so I kept going. And I'm like, well, there's no way I've got 50 yet. And then when yeah, I went to right. rate them, they're like, you were about to rate 141 games. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so many. Well, it's like, because I had like 300 of them in mind, and it was taking me forever. So finally, yeah. I get down like, okay, I know I've done at least 50 games. No way this game's going to be top 50. Remove it from the list. Yeah, and I started calling it stuff. after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to try to, like, I had to do that with process. Foundations of Rome. It was like in there. I'm like, get this garbage out. I already, already knew it was number one. So, oh, Chains. spoilers. Chains. Chains. I, Midgard, I'll... <laughs> I alluded to this in the previous list. I don't know if we'll get anywhere, but do you guys have a theme oh, of your 31? Through forty, is there a yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, What's your theme? Okay. They, they're ranked. I knew that. Forty that, through that thirty-one. I, th- and I, I love have the them same. I have the same theme. High five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll say this: a lot of mine, a, an insane amount of mine, have to do with alternative history. Ooh. Nice. Thank you for playing along, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> my Kiss theme ass. is lords. Oh, oh my oh. theme is blood. Oh. <laughs> Thank I, you for I went, playing along, Tim. You're welcome. I went with board games <laughs> that I like in the rank of 31 to 40. That checks out. All right, so number 40, nope. starting with Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Bob. Aww. Oh, he'll never make the top 50. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> <laughs> Sad panda. All right, Bobby, get us going at uh, number 40. Number 40. For you. So this game has gotten a ton of hype this year. Tim and I really tried to not like this game, but I really kind of liked this game. Arc Nova. Yeah. It's got a really cool action selection. You got like tags, kind of uh, like Terra, uh, yes, uh, Terra, yeah, Terraforming, Mars. Terraforming Mars style. Uh, but I just really enjoyed it. You're building your little, your little zoo. You're putting in out space. these little in space. Yeah, because we thought it was space themed for some reason. What? Oh, in space. Yes. Uh, but no, like the, the, like area aspect of where you're trying to like picture all these like things going together and you're covering up all the little yes. slots and gaining resources for that. How you move the coffee icon um, and that like indicates the end of the, the rounds break, yeah. Yeah, with the breaks. Uh, the action selection and how like if you don't do an action, it gets stronger and stronger and builds up kind of like that. I really like that done. action yeah. selection. It's just a really, it, it's just done well. It, we, said, we tried to poo-poo on it because we, we were like, no, nah, we're going we're to not like this game. Like, God, that's a good game. It is a good game. <laughs> it didn't crack my top 100, but I think uh, it might. 100? Yeah, but it might oh. in like with more plays sure. and things like that. But wait, this game doesn't have sci-fi in it. Nope. No, I'm not even kidding. No, <laughs> I haven't played it yet. That yeah. was that was like b- most of our review. Yeah, we we're like, wait a minute, we really thought it was gonna be like in space or something. I thought it was like, like a space. I, yeah, I didn't know about like space, but like Ark Nova and even the cover to me just I Looks thought sp- there was gonna I, be. Yeah. I thought we were. I thought we were building like a zoo, like a ship. 
And we're yeah. like Ark. He's sending it into space. Yeah, sending it into space. To, yeah. <laughs> we're going to repopulate a... the planet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, a different planet. A different yes. planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See, so see a different planet with uh, yeah, right. but animals instead yeah, right. of people there because people are horrible. We are. We're the worst. So, we're pretty yeah. <laughs> Animals are awesome. They're, yeah, they are. Send them out there. Yeah, they're also the worst. Well, it depends on the animal. Yeah. Okay, my number <laughs> 40 is the first game of my blood theme, and uh, it is talked about last week. It is Blood Rage. Oh, okay. Blood yeah. Rage is my 40. It is uh, my, I guess, my second favorite of the trilogy. Mm. Uh, it's good. But I think it's really good. I also do think, though, that new players can get absolutely destroyed if you don't know what you're Has doing. Has that happened? I feel like, I feel like this, this game is mo uh, this most, this one out of the three is the most susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a great game. When it came out, it was one of the first to do all the stuff that it does. And uh, it also powered through the Viking it is, era. It is. Yeah. Like, everyone hated yeah. Viking games because they kept coming out with them. Yeah, then, Champions yeah. of Midgard. Yeah, and then this one just like... Well, this one was that. one of the earlier ones, sure. right? And then Fire everybody that came yeah, out at the same time, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of like, and then games they on. they started to thankfully like taper off. But the movies do the same thing, right? Like Correct. right now, all of the it's all nature games. Mm. Everything's all nature games. Yeah. There's like two nature games I like. One of them is is funded on Kickstarter. By the time this comes out, thankfully is 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 already funded and great, and that's hike it. But like right now, it's all nature games. Everything's nature games. Right. Blah blah blah. Nature games are great. Mm. Side note, hike it just did those. Their player boards. Yeah. They look amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats again, guys. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so Blood Rage is my number 40. No nature in that at all. Great pick. It'll be a while for me still. That's fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my 40 is just a fantastic game. I had asked him what the name of it was because oh. I couldn't remember. <laughs> it is a great game. But I love this game. I've played it quite a few times. And every time I try a different planet, with a different asymmetricness to nice. it. Nice. This game sold out in like 35 seconds at Yeah, Gen. It did. By Adam's Apple Games, and that's Planet Unknown. Guys, I love spatial puzzles. This game is amazing. You might like Arc Nova. Puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might like Arc Nova for that. I might. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, I, I, there's, I there's a really good spatial I puzzle seen element to gameplay it. on it yet. Yep. So I'll Clearly, because it it's but, not um, in space. But in Planet Unknown, uh, everyone has their own planet. Uh, uh, again, amazing production quality here, of value here to where there's all the one side of all the planets are the base planet, so you can play all the same. But then, if someone's more advanced, or if you want to flip it over, you can flip it over, and then every planet is different. And I mean, there are everyone. There's like sixteen different yeah, planets. Insane. Mm -hmm. There's an insane yeah. amount of mm -hmm. planets that are all completely asymmetric. And then you also have like a corporation board, or whatever yes. you want to call it. And then again, you have like the basic ones, or you have the asymmetric ones. And then you mix the planet with the corporation, and that's going to feel different. So not mm -hmm. only do you have different planets, then you have different corporations. Then the combo of those are going to feel completely different too. There was so much variability and yeah. replayability in this game. It's insane. So one of the crux of that game is like there's like a Lazy Susan in the middle with like these Tetris pieces with different terrain types on them. Mm -hmm. And you like when it's your turn, you get to rotate it to the sector that you want to choose from and everybody else chooses from an, uh, the sector that's in mm -hmm. front of them. And even that... Like the inside, because there's two sections to your um, to your sector, yeah. but you can pick up the inside and rotate it so that you don't have the three straight with the two straight. You know, yep. the same two pieces are, aren't together at the same right. time. Even so that's it, variability. Yeah. And then it also does something that we're huge fans of here to where it has a neighbor interaction. Yes. It's just um, a, a, like a mechanic that's taking off, and mm -hmm. I'm all for it. It yeah. makes games mm -hmm. so much better. But to where we'll have like little kind of like goals that sit between. So Tim and I are working towards this, and whoever gets this gets these points. But then Mike and I are working towards these, and then... Mm -hmm. Mike and Bob are working towards that amazing I love little that concept. Uh, really, fun, yeah. really well designed game. Thing. Is. Uh, there is so much going on in Planet Unknown. I want to thank Andrew for introducing yeah. it to yeah. us, but like, I don't think he deserves it. Well, it's true. Wow. You know, if we, if we give him too much credit, yeah. he's not going to fit through his front door with <laughs> exactly. that big old shoe. <laughs> exactly. So you have a little bit of credit, but not too much. Yeah. In all fairness, I will for this one. I'm kidding. I will give him full credit for this one. Yeah, no, I hadn't heard of it. Because I don't like any other game he's introduced me to. So, <laughs> so this what, one. Not even his own game that he made? <laughs> You're right. Dang. Uh, no, but but seriously, Planet Unknown, uh, I was I was so happy after I played the, the, the first time, and I just I want to play it again and again and mm -hmm. again, and I wish I could have bought it yeah. uh, when we were at Gen Con, but it was just... It, I, I mean, got first real of lucky all, getting my Yeah, copy. first of all, they sold through in like 30 seconds, but Less then than, also... I, don't, I think they sold out before the doors even opened. Yeah, but like, then also, yeah. it was pretty expensive. I mean, you're, it's worth it when you yeah. see the components and how great the game is, but it's a little expensive. Um, but, you know, someday I hope to own it. Reprints are coming. Game. Yeah, Reprints I'm, I'm are sure coming. they will print it again. Sure. Yeah. 
it's become one of my new anytime, any place games. Like anytime, any place you want to play Planet Unknown, let's let's go. Yeah. Like I'm always getting. It also to play has that. the um, simultaneous, simultaneous play. stuff mm-hmm. that is yeah, so really cool. down. We played this last night. We did. Mm-hmm. I won by one. Nice. I, won I, beat point. I won. <laughs> I actually That's... used, and this is what's cool about it. Every planet plays totally different. I took the track that specialized on water movement, but the water movement track like goes and, yeah, and forth wraps around tracks. between the other tracks. And I picked the planet that has all the water. So I'm just oh, you comboing the planet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Yeah. That's is how that... we won. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, sure. There's for the a record, I use the to Mike base winning. Of I just always randomize it. I did base both because yeah. I, I was teaching new people, so I wasn't. I don't want to try to keep track of my own stuff. Sure. So I just did base. And you still only beat Bob by one point. Yeah. Yes. Ah, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Not who can't fit out the door. The guy who wins one out of ten times hey, can't gloat no, about I'm stuff. I'm letting you gloat. Away. I'm just saying that it is, you know, there's, there's a caveat. Just, just I, just, it a I just bit. love that Bob if, can't no. let you have if it, you though. If you pick two things that work really <laughs> well together. You, know, you can taste. A little tasty taste. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, t- hey, hey. Good job. Good job. We're Thank proud of you. We're proud of you, I appreciate it. I beat Bob at a game. I, I'm going to beat Dan up for not allowing me to enjoy it. <laughs> the fact that I beat Bob at a game. All right, All right. So, Lord's Theme. This was my gateway game. I still love this I game. I love this game. I've, I've played it a buttload. First game I ever bought, I played it. I be, I'm guessing I love this game. I bought it, and then, like, this was the game I taught everybody, and it's Lords of Water. Yeah, Deep. baby. Lords of Water Deep. It's a good uh, game. Definitely play with Skull, Scoundrels of Skull Ports. It's not amazing. It's a good game. It's a good game, and I will still play it, and um, I just owe my love to this hobby, to this game. Well, when we uh, when we get to the Lords themed mm-hmm. section of my list, we'll talk about it more. I uh, <laughs> I have more to talk more. about today. I just love how thematic this game is. Yep, not very thematic at all. What? Yeah, it is. You're just you just. Your little tiny brain <laughs> oh can't comprehend the theme. Oh my and all goodness, of you out hard. there who say it's not thematic, oh. you got a new thing coming. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> what you the theme when it comes to water, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You uh, jabronis don't know anything yeah, about the water team. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, like Dan just was, needed like the sunglasses. Uh, uh, you oh, just yeah. don't know what's going to happen when you Ooh, the I, cream rises My number 40 is going to last three minutes. <laughs> Bone size ready. Just let's go, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I <sighs> snap it to a me. No, I really do actually find it pretty thematic. I do. Yeah, I do it's too. It's a certain mindset you have to be in for it, though. Yeah, you're manipulating. Yeah, you're manipulating yeah, the was, peons. This yeah. was that game where I'm like, oh, this is what board gaming can do. Yeah. And I asked to play it twice in the same night. Nice. And I, and I bought it like three days later and. I will say, and it's Ooh. been done since. I wish more worker placement games had the building mechanic that Lords of Water I does. I love yes. creating the building yes, where yes, you are yes. choosing what worker placement spl- slots to add to the map. That I love is, it. There are other games that do it, but it is yeah. still rare. And, and somebody and I, will I want that. own one of those buildings and get a benefit right. and use it. So you want to use it because it's the best spot on the board, but the owner's going to get something out of it. Yes. Yeah. Like, like, man, if something yes. like, yes. If something yes. like yes. that was in Dune Imperium, man, oh, it'd be so amazing. Because Dune Imperium even has the you know, oh, you well, you won the war. You now own Arakeen. So now when people go there, you get something. But like, mm-hmm. oh man, I just that mechanic is so uh, good. So good. It is so good. All right. Great, great, great game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my number thirty-nine, uh, Venice. This is a great little. Uh, you have gondolas. You're going around the streets of Venice. What? We go just on. haven't played it. Go on. Yeah, please. Continue. Going, you're going down Ooh, the yeah, uh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> on the, the streets of Venice in your gondola, and you're activating oh. the buildings that you've got guys on. You can stop at buildings to upgrade your person's position in that building. Uh, so it's kind of like by the other gondolas, though. That's right, because that's suspicious, and you build up intrigue. And if you get too much intrigue, you get arrested at the end of the game, and you cannot win. Uh, but that's what, so that's a really cool mechanic. Uh, so it's kind of like engine building as you're going around and trying to activate as many buildings. You have contract uh, delivery uh, fulfillment, so you like picking up certain cubes, putting them on your boats, moving your boats around, and trying to deliver them to the right spot, and that will unlock a asymmetrical power that you can get. Uh, it's and then they have uh, an expansion coming out because so they did like a trilogy too, kind of like Eric Lane did, right? With like right. Ragusa, Venice, 
and Bora Bora. It's no. like the Cornetto <laughs> trilogy where they're uh, not Florence. really related. Yeah, they're but not like... really related, but they're kind of related. Uh, but with the newest one coming out, they actually are releasing a, a large size board for Venice because one of the biggest uh, pet peeves I had on that is you put your guys on the buildings, you can't read the buildings, and it's a little difficult. So they're making a bigger board. The guys go around the outside of the buildings now, so it's going to fix mm. one of the biggest complaints I had with that game. Yeah, I'm really excited to get it to the table again because I, I really enjoy it. Levi, my goodness, he sharked me at that game. He had some crazy engine built up where he was like going by and getting money and he was hitting almost every building on the map in one turn and but yeah it was uh, really good sounds like he cheated yeah <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> he, he, classic Levi he just had a really good teacher oh, oh that's weird yeah um, <laughs> who <Come on. laughs> Patrick <No. laughs> makes sense uh, so my 39 is a continuation of my blood theme and then that will be the end of the blood theme uh, it's short lived uh, but anyways, this is one of the uh, most amazing social deduction games I've ever played. This is one of the games I've been most wrong about and judging it before it has been out and before I played it. And that is Blood on the Clock Tower. We just recently did a review of this game. Uh, I it am is, offended. It is fantastic <laughs> that it exists. I share in his offense. Uh, well, it's not even on my list. Oh, yeah, never but you played, it. played it. <laughs> and we talked about that in the review. Wow, how oh, yeah. much of a baby you are. Yeah, this I is... didn't watch the review. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in it. I did. <laughs> this is a great game. This is a really, really great game. I think yeah, the only thing that's amazing. really going to hinder it, other than Bob, is uh, <laughs> is the fact that it's going to be hard to get for a wow. while. That's now, true, but kind of. the Chaos Institute, right? That's who made it. Uh, Pandemonium. Pandemonium Institute, excume me. S similar Same thing. Similar theme. Uh, anyways, they have done a, also, though, they have done a fantastic job, though, of making this game accessible by allowing you to sure. print and make, make your own print and play versions to play online, you know, like uh, yeah. via that server and everything. Like, and, just. And uh, they have a, uh, I don't know what it's called, like a GitHub. Like, you can play, there's a website that's designed to make it very easy to play on Discord. Okay. So, but like, they have, they have done everything they can to make this game that should be impossible to get your hands on. On, you know, not only to play, but to play for well, I, with very little investment other than your time. I'll also just say really quick with the whole hard to get. I don't know what it is right now, but I mean, Jesse didn't back it. Oh, I guess you can order he it. He just on ordered their, off their website. And it took okay, like two weeks. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's cost prohibitive. That's it, true because it is expensive. It, it's even higher it's than they get, thought right? it was going to be. It's but, I think it's like one fifty or one sixty now. I think I, 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 that's even higher than I thought. If it was you watch be. our review, I think the only thing, the only negative we had on the whole game, how long it was. No. The game? Oh, the review. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah, how long the review was. That it, it review, looked, I saw yeah. that, I was like, no, nah, no. <laughs> that review could have been another hour. Yeah. Uh, but no, honestly, was that the book quick, wasn't though. hinged. I think it was like our biggest oh, complaint. Oh, yeah. That was the thing that you brought up. Yeah, because oh, yeah. of, of the clips. Paper clips. <laughs> yeah, that's our biggest complaint about this amazing. Paper like, clips. So much depth. And I have, personally, I have only skim, skimmed the surface of this game. Yeah. And there's so much more that's to it. That's why it's so low. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I know if you dug into teen Teensyville script building, oh my it's, gosh, it is it's just a fantastic game, great experience. And again, I think like a, a common theme with all of us talking about games is the experiences that we have when we play them and the stories, like yeah. any of these games on our top 50. And this is a game that just lends itself to that so much, so many crazy stories and twists and turns, and even a game where you did really badly. Odds are something nuts happened, and you're like, I can't believe when that happened, blah, 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 you know? And so, yeah, Blood on the Clock Tower, freaking fantastic game. That's my number 39. Fantastic game. Mike and I will be covering that in a very long you time. You got to wait a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, have a feel, I had a feeling I was definitely going to be the lowest <laughs> out of the people that have played it, right. ranking of it. <laughs> uh, so my number 39 is alive. It's alive! Yeah. Uh, Great abomination. Game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Era of Frankenstein yeah. uh, is a very macabre worker placement game where you are collecting body parts, whether that's from the morgue, the graveyard, or murdering people in the back alley. It's the freshest. Um, and you are literally building the muscles, skin, and everything of uh, a body, and you want to be the first person to bring your person to life. I don't actually think, though, you win the game if you're the first person. No, to this is another one of those games where you can trigger the end and not win yeah, it still. Yeah, exactly. Great Man, mechanic. what an awesome mechanic. Um, yeah, it's a cool mechanic. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, my only issues with the game is it, it's a little long, mm -hmm. um, and it is pretty darn crunchy. Yeah, um, yeah. Too. It's a crunchy worker place, um, but really so, good. So long and crunchy <clears throat> are not terrible for me, but it, it's it's iffy. 
Um, and Abomination does make it to the top 50 for me. It's just, it is one of the most thematic games ever. This was number one for me for Halloween yep. theme. If you want like, you know, like an atmospheric uh, kind of creepy game, this one does it in spades. And uh, yeah, I it will probably be talked about later, but Abomination the Air Frankenstein, a mm -hmm. fantastic worker. Love this game. game. Mm -hmm. With components, just even without the upgraded, I'm sure it's cool. The fact your that components you're, are still you're good. literally building a body on your player board, like yeah. putting the arms on and the head and like, ah, oh, it's so Putting cool. skin on it. Yeah, that, that base game components for the body and limbs and stuff like that is, is super great. But yeah. the um, uh, little cubes, I had a hard time with the color, so I had Right, for like those. the actual body part. For like pieces, the muscle yeah. and the yeah, bone. And everything. I have the, heard there uh, is a resources. designer-created variant the on Igor. BGG that shortens the game. I go oh, okay. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I'm I go into that. Variant. Okay, yes. nice. What hump? <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. good pick. <clears throat> my number 39 is a game that I have played a buttload this year. Mm -hmm. That was last week's theme. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Wait but, a minute. <laughs> uh, I've just, this is one of my most played games of 2022. It is one of my favorite word games, and this is Decrypto. Uh, Decrypto is a fun little team game. You separate it into two teams. Uh, each team gets four words with numbers at the bottom, and then a code giver draws a card that has three numbers on it. You're then going to write three clues to get your team to guess the three-digit code. Well, while you're doing that, the other team's doing the same thing. And then after your team guesses the code, correctly or incorrectly, you're going to then give your clues to the other team, and they're going to try to figure out your code, even though they can't see the words. Mm. And that's just what's so interesting about this game is that the game that you are playing to get your teammates' code is so much different than what you're doing right. to try to get the other team's code. You it, don't know the words. Right. It you're is just a... going off a word association. Exactly. Mm. So every round, you're keeping track of every clue the other team has given you, and you're just kind of like, well, these, don't, this, well, these words yeah. don't really fit, and mm. wow, we don't even have a, a clue for two yet. Right. And but, I just, oh, at one point they said spin, and at one point they said vortex those are probably going towards the same number yeah mm -hmm. that kind of thing yeah and so you continue to play until uh somebody gets they, they get their uh, teammates code wrong twice or you get the other team's code correct twice or which has never happened in a game i've played you play through eight rounds and then in which case you try to guess the other team's words i always play where the game ends no matter what you try to guess the other team's words because oh, that's sure. what makes it's just, it, it's that just makes fun. it more fun. fun i've never had a game that actually lasted eight rounds though <laughs> so i almost want to like shrink that because the game's fast enough i want to house rule it to tweak it God, but i want to take the two rounds from this and slap it on the edge of dice yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and then those yeah those two rounds i like want to shave off different of this on these game. last two rounds but yeah. trust me it works <laughs> but yeah i just really like this word game i will say this game was the reason that i wanted to learn more about turing machine when it hit gen con mm -hmm. massive gen con hit uh scorpion mass does make very good a uh, little puzzle type games so I, don't yeah, know. I, only, I enjoyed the decrypto like once or twice I played it, mm -hmm. and I think I did really well at it. We were playing it, it was like four rounds in, and I was able to guess all three of your words or whatever it was. I like, remember it was at Tim's house. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I was like, wait, was your word this, this, and this? And they're like, yeah. Oh, that's why you won. <laughs> it's like a real flowers for Algernon yeah, situation yeah. over here. Like sometimes Bob is like, you know, very savant. You know, and then heavy on the idiot, and then he degrades <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. Like he gets very smart for a few minutes, ah, and then it's back oh. down. <laughs> I, I like how, as as the game goes, you kind of know how much uh, how much leeway you have. If the other team already has one correct, their next guess can win the game. So you're like, oh man, I got to be really vague with these clues um, because my team hasn't gotten any wrong yet. Mm. But if my team has also gotten one wrong correct, and they get the next one wrong, you could lose the game. So it just ramps up that tension a little bit. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I liked it's it. Yeah, time. it works really well for me. I, uh, I, 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 it's not in my top fifty. I do like it. I just haven't played it a bunch, and I think uh, there are other games that give me a similar feeling. But we may enough. chat about those. Uh oh. Okay. We'll see. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. So you guys haven't had a chance to play this yet. I've been playing it with Levi. Uh, it's a, a cheater. Yeah, you cheat from the Venice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cheater from Venice. Cheater from Venice. Uh, <laughs> I've seen that movie. It's, it's a kind of under Hitchcock. the radar Simon game. Trudvon 
Legend. Oh, sure. Oh, you've been talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's got a little bag building aspect to it where each player has like a character, uh, asymmetrical, right? Like it can be like a warrior or wizard mm-hmm. or whatever. And each one has starting stats. You put all those little bits into a bag. Mm-hmm. And then as you're doing like, oh, skill check, and you got to pull seven out. Or one of the neat things is like when you do combat, you have to pull three out at a time. Okay. And so like uh, you have four skill cards and all your skill cards will have all these different like icons on there depending on what the skill is. Mm-hmm. So you pull three chips out and then you can place them on your skills. But if you don't have anywhere you can place them on your skill cards, they go to like your miss track. And so if you only miss uh, three things in your miss track, then you still qualify for like uh, boons that you have that are lit up in blue. If you pull a fourth miss, you don't get anything. But if you pull um, five uh, misses, you get the penalty. And if you hit six misses, you bust and you don't get anything at all. And it's just a really – it's so hard sometimes trying to get some of these skill checks. So they want you to have so many successes. Like, man, I have to, like, pull all four of the – you know, mm-hmm. I have, like, eight of the – or 12 things in there. i got to pull four of them that are all the right ones. Uh, so it's really hard. But, like, another neat thing about it, though, is that the board has these, like, um, see-through sleeves on there. So you have cards, and you're, like, sliding in different locations on the map. Okay. And that you can, like, take your people to. And, like, it's very story-driven. So as you're doing things, like, oh, flip to this. Would you like to do this or this? So, like, okay, well, let's go this way and fight this guy. And so you're kind of, like, choosing your own adventure as you go. And then you also have a, a – um, another sideboard that has like all of the uh, phases of the game. And then as you're playing through, like, oh, now you have this that you can do. So add this card to your phases. And so as now as you're going through the turns, you have another phase that you can do. And then you have all the other like side NPCs and side quests and things like that. So when you start the game, you're like, what well, do we want to do? Like the main quest or we want to do this side quest. Mm-hmm. You go to that appropriate page in the book and you're doing, it's just a really neat, like involved storytelling kind of like, uh, adventure game. It's, yeah. it's, it's like it's got the, like the bag building that we really enjoyed, and as you go to the different locations, you could buy more bits to put in your bag, to sure. help your odds and stuff. And yeah, it's really neat. I really like what we're doing. It's kind of unfortunate that we got so deep into this uh, other computer game, so we haven't like played this in a couple oh, of weeks now. Yeah. Uh, but we had a really good time in like the four or five times we've played it, and um, yeah, it's check it out. Trudvong. Trudvong. Yeah. Legends. Good luck spelling that. I know. T R U D V O. <laughs> You're reading it. I, uh, I, mean, I mean, Matt will need that. He will need that. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my 38 uh, was talked about last week, I believe, and it is my second favorite Star Wars game. Mm. Man, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Yeah. I put a lot of time into this, especially when they went to the app. Yes. Like, and it could be app driven. Yeah. Um, because I'm a big fan of the uh, second edition of Descent, the Journeys mm. into Dark. Um, and I just Imperial Assault does it does just Feels very Star Wars more than than all but one other Star Wars game. Yes, and uh, it is it just captures the essence and like the high adventure of it and stuff. And it it helped that it was already built when it came out. It was built on a system that I already knew because I played so much Descent Second Edition. Mm-hmm. You know the rules are basically the same. Yeah, just different characters in a different setting, and they do a really good job of integrating uh, characters that you know while you're still playing with you know unique to the scenario characters, right? Right. And then the other thing the app does really well that I think is fantastic is that you can add in the app what things you have in your collection. Oh, I've got the Boba Fett, you know. Oh, I've got the Thrawn expansion. Well, and then it knows, like, it'll throw a side quest later at you Mm -hmm. where Thrawn comes in and something because it knows that you have that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just just a really neat thing to do. I've run through the game solo, like, playing it, you know, and I can't wait to get some more things for it then go through and play again. Yeah, yeah. Try out some different stuff. Uh, But, yeah, just it's very accessible, very easy to play. I I just really like it, and it's been a great experience. So Star Wars Imperial Assault is my number 38. There aren't a whole lot of dungeon-crawling games that I really enjoy, but this is one I've played a couple times and I really liked, and I would love to play it again. Okay, This has by far been the one where I was like, hey, this is one – I could see from start to finish, I would play and enjoy. I also just personally think the theme does a lot for it. Yes. It's a good game. I don't think it's amazing. And then you put Star Wars on it, and you're like, man, this is fun. Yeah. Like, you really get into that universe. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll talk more about other stuff later. But yes, I don't think you're wrong. Uh, my 38, uh, by Rio Grande is, uh, I believe I'm not looking that far ahead. Uh, I believe my favorite pure deck builder. I've talked about it a lot and that's Arctic scavengers. Oh yeah. Uh, not too much to talk about here. Um, we have a playthrough on the channel from a really long time ago. Was this um, in your top 30 when we did that like two years uh, ago? And this has been on like four of his lists. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, at least according to my notes, it wasn't. Uh, Arctic Scavengers, uh, in the in the vein of Dominion, a basic uh, deck builder. There is a little bit more to it than Dominion. If you're talking no expansions, like uh, 
uh, after a certain amount of rounds, combat starts happening uh, to where uh, the cards that are like left in your hand have populations, and then you you fight each other's populations, and whoever wins the combat gets uh, a card out of a deck that's like insanely powerful. And so you have to be careful about that because if someone keeps getting these cards, they can run away with it. Like so, you have to like really like okay, I, I need to not get that right. many things from the market this turn because I need to stand up against that guy. Um, the way that the junk works to where you're digging through a junk pile yeah. and getting stuff is pretty cool and thematic. I love the theme where it's this like almost post-apocalyptic like winter world where um, everyone's just trying to survive in their own little, you know, groups of people. Um, that's what each person represents. It's kind of like a faction of people. Um, the card system is really basic. It just has, you know, iconography going down the side. This card lets you draw one and, you know, do this or whatever, right? And then there's just the pool of cards in the middle. Uh, the expansions do add some really cool things. Like there's the buildings expansion that adds little like asymmetric buildings that you get and they have like powers on them and you can build buildings and like add buildings in front of you. Uh, one of them adds asymmetric leaders to your faction. That's really cool. Like there's just some really cool stuff in here. And I just, every time someone talks about Dominion, I'm, I'm literally like, have you, have you heard of Arctic Scavengers? Like, yeah, I'm not like really trying good. to insult them. Jerk, I'm just but saying, yeah, it's like, hey, this is th very this similar. This is very similar. And honestly, it completely replaced it for me. Winter themed. Uh, yeah. And winter themed. It's <laughs> literally an instant win for me. I'm just saying. Snow on the tile. It counts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's Arctic Scavengers. Again, uh, if you like pure deck builders, I would strongly suggest checking it out. And if you don't know anything about it, like I said, we do have a playthrough on our channel and from a long time ago. This was a game that I never heard of until you started talking yeah. about it and then when i played it i was like oh yeah this is really good i i really like it uh my number 38 Don't i'm blow gonna it. say this and then uh tim's gonna be like oh yeah i remember this this is an engine building game about building engines and i'm gonna say it again because it's just fun to say it's an engine building game about building engines it's steampunk rally uh this was on my if you got five or more players i would play steampunk rally because it supports eight mm -hmm. there's no downtime you start with the drafts so everybody's picking their the parts that they're going to attach to their engine um, or you can discard the cards and get dice and then you do a race phase we are rolling dice simult everybody's simultaneously rolling dice and activating these cards and they're going to get you more dice or they're going to move you along the track because this is a race game you're trying to get to the finish line first and i just love race games i've Come to realize this was one of the first race games that like really hit home for me. And now there's several more that I just love. And I'm like, why do I like racing? I don't like racing in real life. Mm -hmm. NASCAR themes have no, I have no interest there. Like people talk to me about other F1 games and I'm like, ah, that, that, that seem, theme sounds terrible. And I look at the gameplay and I'm like, oh, that looks like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I just like race games. I mean, in all fairness, NASCAR versus Death Race are like very <laughs> different, even though they're both racing games. So I can see why Steampunk Rally. I'm not saying that's Death Race. But I'm saying if I can you play see it why right, it is. I can see why the theme and world of Steampunk isn't exactly a one for one of how much you'd enjoy NASCAR. Oh, <laughs> you know? fair. I, but I, I just love how you like take damage and like get to like pieces of your ride keep falling sure, off yeah. so like racing down this hill trying to go as fast like, as you can taking damage like a galaxy flying off yeah. of you as you're going i love how there's kind of the two sort of ways to play it you can play careful and you can try to repair the parts that are flying right. off but it is just as much fun <laughs> to take the more Path dangerous hazard, path that there. also has shortcuts you're going as fast as possible you lose four pieces and you're like Okay, so what? I'm yeah. going to attach four more in the next round. As long as the <laughs> cockpit slides across the finish line, you're good to yes. go. <laughs> I just love the different ways you can play it. It's got a lot of different... It uses like famous inventors yep, famous as inventors. your characters. Mm -hmm. They oh, all cool. have yeah. like variable player power. So yep. it's this steampunk-themed inventors attaching crap to a machine and yep. trying to make it... <laughs> just see what happens. Just see yeah. what happens. See what happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it just, it's, it's it, loose it, and fun, and I just have a blast playing it. It's, it gives me that steampunk feel, too, where like you're rolling the dice and you're putting them on the cards to like fuel it up, like you're filling it up with steam, and then on your next turn you have to vent that steam and let it go so that you can start to fill it back up with steam again. You know, once it's sure. completely drained out. And to me, that really kind of it, it makes the steampunk not feel tacked on. Mm -hmm. It feels like yeah. it's actually part of the game. Yeah, I like that mechanic because the dice are stuck to the card, right? And you got to use you a keep, separate phase keep, to get them bring back. Bring the pips down, bring the pips down, yeah, and vent that cool steam. So if you yeah. roll a six and you activate it, you great, you lot. probably got mm -hmm. a lot out of that six. But it's going to take you multiple cogs to get that round that die off there. It may even take you more than one round to get yeah. that die off there. And or if you that's just your let it favorite, fly off. or <laughs> yeah, or just let that piece get destroyed you and know, replace it later. That's right. Fall off of it. Yeah, I just thoroughly enjoy that game. 
just it's a great fun game. to play. It and is. I like that there's virtually no downtime. Everybody's mm-hmm. racing at the same time. Yep. You're kind of seeing how far they go. And just kinda, a lot of fun. Kind of random. My dad, who does not play many games at all, thought that was a super unique and had a lot of fun playing. He's nice. like, I really want to play that game again. Because like once he started like realizing that he puts the dice in them, they don't just come off, and he had to keep you know, reducing them down. He's like, that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, he's asked, he's requested that game a couple of times. That's great because I, I think this game, even though it's not hard to play, it's a little tricky to teach because it doesn't yeah. play like anything else. Like, mm. you're kind of like, oh, wait, so I can do all this at the same time while other people are doing that? Yeah, yeah, you sure can. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's different. It's different. But I, I it's, played this when Bob heavy. first got it. Yep. And have never played it again. Uh I didn't like it. But I don't I think that that was a learning game. There was kind of a high player count. Well, you said Bob right. taught it. And Bob taught it. Um <laughs> I probably didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> uh but I, but I, I like I don't want I'm not going to come out and I say I don't it was like, like an that. Eight player game. Yeah, it was too it yeah. was probably too many players yeah. while we're all still learning. Yep. Like there was a lot of things going into that for me to not go like I don't want to go oh that game sucks cuz I didn't because I didn't really have like a good, real, experience. real experience with mm. it, like a, a fair experience right. with it. But anyways, yep. uh, I'm glad you guys like. We it. gotta play it again. I yeah, I'll play it again. I haven't played it. I check it out. It sounds like dumb fun. I like dumb. No, fun. you don't like having fun when you play games. No, no, I do. That's why I hate games like Quacks that aren't fun. Oh dang! <laughs> I'll argue that. So in a couple my number weeks. thirty-seven. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Uh, this is a fun little dice worker type placement game by our friends of the Grand Gamers Guild, the Artemis Project. Mm. Mm. Uh, Haven't played. Uh, yep. Yeah, this is so. This is a snowy kind of planet, and you're rolling dice, and you're play. So Dan's in. <laughs> uh, you're placing your dice uh, on the different worker locations, and like so, if you're going to the resource gathering part, uh, and you put a three on there, you're going to be able to gain three of those resources. But the the kick is, is other people can put their dice in that same lineup, and it's going to line up according to like pip size. And so there, eventually, there could be not enough resources there for you to take anything if you try to put too big of a die on there. Mm-hmm. So you got to try to you know meta that a little bit with the people that you're that you're up against. And then so you have a couple of different resource locations. You have a location for like building new locations in your base. Uh, you've got a spot where you're like recruiting citizens as they as they uh, land on the planet. You've got a little school where you can like increase, like make them better, like take the regular people and then teach them to be engineers or scientists because certain buildings require certain types of people to run them. Mm. Uh, and then there's like uh, adventures that you can send people on, like uh, to go out and try to find new resources and abilities and things like that. And it's just kind of like an oh, I feel like it's kind of overlooked. I don't hear a lot about it. Um, yeah. They did come out with a new uh, expansion for it. I think it's called uh, Satellites Odyssey. and Commanders. Oh, no. or something. Or, um, I think it's a Commanders and Satellites. It's something with satellites. <laughs> I forget the other word of it. Uh, but I, I really enjoy this game. I'm looking forward to the uh, expansion coming Yeah, out. I'd like I, to play it. I feel like personally, and this is just from my perspective, my friend group and stuff that I've seen online and everything, what you just said about it seems to be overlooked. That just seems to be Grand Gamers Guild to me. Yeah. Yes. Like they That's make good. really good games. Yeah. And just like I don't hear anyone really talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not I sure don't why know. that is. Maybe they need more marketing people. Yeah, maybe. You know, well, they're a small lot of Grand Rapids. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like small yeah. company, but mm-hmm. yeah, they do good things. They I do. really. Yeah, really mo- yeah. I don't think I've played like maybe one of their games I didn't really care for, but for the most part, I've liked everything of theirs. Yeah, played. yeah. I even yeah. like games like Garinto that I normally wouldn't oh, like. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah Garinto was great. But they make it good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. Um, all right, my number thirty-seven is a game that I know about because of Dan. Uh-oh. Uh That's what's, his theme for his list. What's funny, yeah, it kind of is, I guess. Uh, what's funny, though, is I went to buy this game and bought the expansion by accident. Oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> I remember that. I, and it was, that was my fault, too. I said, you should really buy that. I think you'd like it. It would be great to cover over the show. And he was like, okay. And he bought it, and he got home, and he texted me later that night and said, Dan, this is an expansion. Uh, but everything else Dan said was right. <laughs> I liked it. It was good to cover for the show. Uh, by Matago Games, Treasure Island. Oh, yeah. So Treasure Island, in, this is like a, a, a really fun twist on sort of that 1v many hidden mm. movement game. Because it's like, in my brain, that's what my brain says that this game is. But it's not. Right. Uh, basically, you are, uh, you are uh, uh, Long John Silver. You're captured. You're locked in a tower. And somewhere on this island, you have buried your treasure. And everybody else is trying to find it before you escape and get to your treasure. And the the just the fun juxtaposition of like, oh, do I do I search like this wide right. radius? You literally have like small search tools. Like, oh my yeah. gosh! Like yes. protractors and yeah. stuff. That you're Compass like, and yeah. try to draw my circle. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The components of this game are so good, and the clues that you can give are so good. And what's awesome is that also you get to a point where it's like I can lie or I can tell the truth. 
you know, right. with, with this clue. Right. And with, but, but the lie, right? The bluff doesn't mean that you lied. It just right. means you might have lied. Be bluffing. You are allowed to lie. Correct. That is my Oh bending. my gosh. It is so much fun. Even yeah. like even when I have done badly at this game, I don't care. It is so much fun to play. I just love the intrigue and sort of the watching people walk right, right over right your treasure it. and like just <laughs> dig like so close. And I'm like, nope. And then they just go, the satisfaction of watching them go when they literally yeah. miss by like two millimeters and then they go to a completely different part of the island because they're like, dang, I thought that was it. What's so cool too with the components is so you have the board with the actual size like um, ruler and everything, but then you uh, also have a mini board and you have a two scale thing yeah. to you so you're measuring it with this you know yes like and it's basically all you're saying like part of your player board is a miniature map that correct you yes yes uh, and, you, and you have a miniature ruler that is to scale as if you had it on a big one it's to scale to your it's just that's really neat it's so good so it's you're so, not like hold on and you're everybody's yeah. watching what you're doing and trying to plan on the thing and also the the board is two-sided so you yeah. have this full color version of the Beautiful. island or you could play yeah. with the uh the jason, jason smith version. uh <laughs> approved <laughs> version which looks like a map yeah, 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 yeah. it just looks more map yeah it's a tan map color yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's a and really it's easier good, to see the markers. It is it easier is. to see the markers, exists. but it's a really good ver uh, game and just really unique. I don't have anything like it in my collection. Um, One of the nice balancing things I really like about the game is that if if the the mini aren't doing great and and Long John escapes and is working towards this treasure, you can see what direction he's sprinting I mean, he still towards. has to, right. And so, so you can kind of see like, ah, crap, he's sprinting Northwest. Uh, I need to, and then like, so people hear like, did you hear John Silver's going Northwest? They're like, what? <laughs> and they're like digging as fast as they can. But also John Silver can like head Northwest and just go, Gotcha! <laughs> yeah, like, you know, turn around and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, just a lot of cool it, mind game it's, stuff. In yeah, there. it's a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and a, a lot of just mind. Yeah, like you just you said, mind. Brought games this and up on a couple lists now, and I just really want to play it. Now Man, it's super I fun. Haven't. It's super fun. I really like it. Here's Bob's list of things Mike needs to play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny. Got all these marks right here, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all these marks, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Treasure Island is my number thirty-seven. I love it. I'm happy it's on my list. Uh, my number 37 was 14 last time. And I also want to say there's no way Arctic Savage wasn't on my last list. So I must have just I feel like it must be. Yeah, I think it was. I, I must have just didn't put the number down. Uh, but it was 14 last time. And the reason that this one has dropped is because I have not played it in years. Um, and it is episodic based. So it's, it's hard to get you know, to get an episode and to play through the episode. And then once you play through it, you're done. You have to get another episode. And that's time stories. Yeah. Guys, I'm obsessed with time travel. Uh -huh. yep. And so in this game, it's kind of more like Quantum Leap, yeah. time travel, but that's fine. In this game, you are people in the future who are jumping back into people's bodies to solve a mystery of some kind. Who mm -hmm. knows? Uh, some murderer is free, and we got to figure out what's going on, or or there's an outbreak of some virus, and we need to figure out what originated it, right? And so you go back, and you're exploring locations, you're talking to people, and then when you run out of time, you get sucked back to the future into your own bodies, and then you got to go again. Well, you forget the most important part. That Bob. jerk that's there, and <laughs> I he's think like, Bob. you guys are terrible at this. <laughs> yeah. Do better. Yeah, every time you go back. How did you guys not succeed on your first attempt? Yeah. <laughs> Get back in there and succeed this time. <laughs> uh, but And then, so then you go back in, but now here's the thing. It's a time travel game. You know, oh, well, we already searched that room. There was nothing in there that you go back to the same time. point in yeah, time every time. you go back time. to the same point. So, so it's almost like a man. I honestly love the underrated movie with Jake Gyllenhaal on the train. Source oh yeah, code. yeah, that's a really that's good a movie. Really underrated movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, but like so that whole go back and you just try to get as much done as you can, and then you go back to the same point and try. It, and so you're learning as you're going on. Yeah. Okay, that lady told us we don't need to talk to her again. She already told us where the key is. The key's yeah. in the cabinet. Let's go to the cabinet and you you figure out the most like efficient optimized. Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. this is how way. I play uh, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective. Yeah, I'm just, just keep kidding. Starting <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this was a dead end. Uh, go back. Yeah. No wonder you told me you beat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, time stories. The problem is it's episodic. Uh -huh. You have to buy each episode separately. They're not super cheap. Well, um, it depends. For, for how much game you get, Sometimes you can find people can argue it. That's true. And the problem is it's hit and miss. You might get an yeah. episode and not enjoy it at all. Yeah. And you can really tank your game on it. Like So I know uh, the first one I loved. Yeah. Um, and then Marcy's case is really good. I haven't played that one, but I've, I've only heard amazing Marcy's things. Marcy's case is so spoiler heavy. I can't even talk about it other than saying play it if you have time yeah. stories. Um, you okay. already spoiled it by saying the name. I know. Who's kidding. Marcy? What's a case? Why did you say that name? <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> This is another it's a game. Martha joke. I've had this on my want to play list well, for now it's a years now. Like uh, so. Yeah. 
I don't own it. Put a check. I got oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I got it. Okay, good. And I've only played the first episode. Well, and the good and news I love is it. it's been so long since I've played the first episode. We it's got to be no, all for me. <laughs> there's one thing I know specifically not to do. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. But and I won't in the tell you guys. Acting surprise. I won't <laughs> tell you guys if you decided to do it. Mike, you talked to that woman. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my number 37. Uh-huh. This is a game that I played only once. And uh, last left a very good impression. I played this at JuliaCon, the most recent one, because Katie from the Board Game Mechanics said this was her number one of all time. Oh. And Coimbra, Coimbra. is fantastic. Yeah. I am so glad I got to play this game. It's been on my radar for several years now. And Coimbra is really just a straight-up Euro but it does a couple things that are really fascinating. So everybody rolls a buttload of dice, which is just fun. Uh, but then you're going to draft a die, and the pip might matter, and the color very much matters. Because after each person drafts three dice, the color determines um, what card you can draft. So you lay the cards out in their colors, and then the higher the pip value determines how high your bid is. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have a six, you're going to get first dibs on those colored cards to pick, but you got to pay more for it. So that priority, you pay extra gold to get it. Um, and I just, I like bidding in games like, Hey, I want to be able to get this gray card and I pulled the four and he, he has the six because he drafted first. Well, I may not get the gray card I want. And that's, Mm. that tension is, Mm -hmm. is really interesting in a Euro game where this bid makes so much of an important factor of the game. But then also the die has a double activation. Those dice also determine what color track you're going to get income from. So you got two reasons to draft this dice. I need a high pit because I want the higher, uh, I I want first dibs and then I want to be able to get this card, but I also need to collect income from this track. And, um, wow. Yeah. I just thoroughly enjoyed Coimbra. There's a lot of nuance to this game even though it's really straightforward to play it's Mm -hmm. pretty easy to learn but to be able to put everything together and play it well requires a little bit of practice but uh, i was really impressed by that game this game would probably be in my top 50 if it fixed the color issues i have with it i remember that yeah i really enjoy the game and like it's almost like a slight engine buildy kind of thing because depending on what cards you get you can kind of like uh, build up your phases so you get more activations and whatnot uh, and it does a pretty good job with like a lot of iconography and making sure that you can do this. But there are some aspects with the color of the die not matching some of the cards, and there's no icon on there. And I've had mm. a really hard time, and I don't like having to discuss, you know, my strategy and planning right. out with people. And that's, you know, marks it down for me a little bit. But th- if that was yep. fixed somehow, it would probably break my top fifty. I remember that was on your uh, ugly game list, and, it, it and is, I understand yeah. why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll buy your copy if you want to get rid of it. <laughs> I'd rather figure out a way to fix it. <laughs> Takeaway from that was that it's not nearly as good as Katie said. Ooh. Yeah, because um, you rated no, it yeah. 37 it's, or whatever. I might way, put it, it's I've only played it either. once. She's probably played it a buttload. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> and as you know, that helps. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, uh, if I track down a copy, play it a few more times, yeah, I could, could see this going up. up. Yeah. Uh, it's just lasting impression. But I like, played a game once. One, and it's on there. No, not once. Okay, so it's, she's wrong. No. Yeah. <laughs> I Breaking news on the board really game rundown. Right Katie, Hotel, really but maybe it's wrong. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, thirty-six. Ooh, it's back to me. So uh, number thirty-six, I learned with uh, Julia back at Origins, and I've been trying to push this game on these guys to I learn it, know what it is. because it's a lot of fun. It's got some really cool uh, mechanics behind it. Would plus, you think it would be ironic if there was a print? And play version of this game? That would be a bit ironic. Okay, just checking. Uh, Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a really neat game. So, like, you're drafting. Um, uh, you have to come up with a... Movable typeface. Yes. Uh, so you're getting letters, and then you're getting ink colors and styles. And then you are also um, have these different skill tracks, like how good are you at choreography? How good are you at the uh, leather making? You mean how calligraphy? Good? Yeah, choreography. That's oh, yeah, fine. Choreography. <laughs> <laughs> Calligraphy. Um, I was like, what? Sorry, wait, what? Choreographing your calligraphy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to choreograph your moves. Duh. Um, <laughs> then you also get these uh, different gears. And so um, you put these gears on your board, and one uh, segment will activate each each round. And then at the start of the round, you rotate your gear one segment, and it rotates all the other gears like accordingly because they all like interlock and whatnot. 
And that's just a really cool concept to me. Like I enjoy that. The little t um, typesets are look like actual typesets. Uh, one of the things that they like to advertise is there's no plastic used. Like in the oh, oh, sure. Yeah, it's yeah one there's of those no go bits. green games. Yeah, it's all just like cardboard and wood and yeah. things like that. Uh, but it's man, it's it's a really neat game. It's fun. I could probably play it in about an hour. Or so. Good thing it doesn't have dice. Well, yeah, I gotta be honest. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I didn't know that's what this game was about because that cover I don't like. Yeah, um, the cover doesn't really fit. I mean, I guess it fits the game, but it doesn't really... No, 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 not the gameplay. Yeah, I just never got what it was about or anything mm -hmm. from the cover. It looks more like a textbook cover or something than a yeah. board game cover. Yeah, I want to yeah. learn. Um, and that that sounds fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Creating a typeface and stuff. That's and choreography. Yeah, yeah, choreography. Yeah, choreography. <laughs> choreography. You know, all your... Yeah. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> um, choreography. So, so you have the typesets. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, uh, the contract you're looking for might be like, oh, an A and I and two U's, but then, like, you can also try to... And you get points for that. And then you have, like, a fancy uh, segment that you can add on. So if you have the right ink colors, you get points for that. If you have the right uh, skill sets, you get extra points for that. If you get both, you Get points for completing both of those. Nice. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and you're just drafting like all those different things. You work your way down the board and you go through those different actions, and it's like eight rounds. Oh, and one of the neat things too is like so everybody has a hidden um, initiative thing. So you've got like all the different actions, and everybody has cubes. Uh, the person in last place has the most cubes. Okay. And so you secretly assign the cubes to the different actions you want to take, and then you reveal. Then whoever has the most cubes on that appropriate action gets to pick first. Okay. Uh, and so that way, whoever is going last can have like first dibs on, you know, okay, well, I have the most cubes. I can know I can do this action first. Gotcha. And then at the end of the round, when you pass the first player marker, everybody passes a cube to the person who is last now. Mm. And so it's kind of a neat way to do the initiative. Yeah, that cover of that box just doesn't. It's not great. Just doesn't know favors to yeah, me. Like no, I don't yeah. know if we'll have one up here for a second, but like, I mm. just I just always thought it was some dry euro about you know I don't even mm. know. Oh, well, Gutenberg, Steve Gutenberg. Gutenberg. Yeah, like yeah, the Steve city Gutenberg. of Gutenberg or something. No, yeah. it's like <laughs> how they made Police Academy. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's great. Like I said, the uh, the gear turning thing is is super interesting because like all there's like a bunch of different gears stacked up and like there's three available each round and you're drafting one of them and you're putting them on your board and you're interlocking them and then like when it's your turn, to, like next time you can either draft another one and add it or you can discard that tile to pick one of your gears up and rotate it to the face you want and right. put it down. And so that's kind of a neat way to work the around. The problem, though, is that when you play games with Bob and he discards things, he throws them over his shoulder. Yeah. It says discard. Every time. Yeah. Gone. Discard? Yeah. Like, no! <laughs> uh, so... That's bad luck. <laughs> my number 36 is the most unique game that I will talk about today. There is nothing else like it on this specific list of the top 10. I've played this game a ton, especially since the app came out and I played a bunch of it solo. And that is Descent Journeys in the Dark, second edition, which is exactly like Star Wars Imperial Assault. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's um, where that went. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that was a long way to go. Yeah, no, it is uh, the the framework, the structure, the rules are yeah. all the same. Mm -hmm. But this Fantasy rates base. higher uh, than Star Wars for me, even though I love Star Wars more as a theme. But I've played, I have so much of this game and I've played so much of it. And um, just getting to do the stuff with the app and uh, see the twists and turns and the stories and even the campaign that actually comes in the game itself. Like when you're playing the 1v many, you know, Overlord version, the campaign's really good and they do this really cool thing where if you win, if the heroes win the battle, you go do this one. And then when you play the next scenario, if the heroes win or lose the battle, depends on which which version of the board you get for the next mission. Does Descent also have the skirmish mode? Um, I don't think it does. Okay. Not like the Star Wars. I was just wondering, because that's a big pro we didn't talk about in the Star Wars one, is it's really cool that the skirmish mode lets one player play as the Empire. And that's yeah. really cool. You play Empire versus Re yeah, yeah. Rebellion and mm -hmm. you can... and stuff. But anyways, Descent uh, Journeys in the Dark, I just... I think it's a great game. I love it. Um, you know, third edition, Legends of the Legends of the Dark. Legends of the Dark. Yeah. It, it, it is the really dark. good. Yeah. You know, I've never Journey played Descent first edition. Um, but uh, but anyways, second edition just will always have a special place in my heart. Love that game. Dungeon Crawler, you know, level up your guys. Spiders. Do lots yep. of cool stuff. Really great minis, you know, and mm -hmm. everything. So tons of fun. Really good game. Unlike any other game on my list. Other than that one, it's exactly like. <laughs> <laughs> My 36 was 16 last time. And again, this one dropped because I think I've only played it maybe twice. It was once or twice. Um, and this was like, wow, worker placement games can be so different. 
when I played this, and that's Architects of the West Kingdom. Ooh, yeah. I just loved the way this game <laughs> felt. It didn't feel like any other worker placing game. The fact that it's a worker placing game where you have like 20 workers, and you just start with all of them, but when you place them, you don't get them back. What? <laughs> That's amazing. That's terrifying for the whole game. I have these 20 workers or whatever. The only way to get them back is if uh, people get arrested. And then so like Bob can, instead of putting a guy in a place, he can arrest everyone in that place. And then they all go to his prison. And then we have to pay the, the uh, oh, sure. what's it called? Uh, yeah. You know, we have to pay Bob to get mm-hmm. our guys released from his, his prison to get them back. And then we get some workers back. But... People can just see that you're low on workers and not arrest your people and make it really stressful on you, you know? And it also makes it harder to want to put a bunch of guys in one spot because you'll lose a bunch of workers with one go and have to pay for all of them because how it works in Architects is, okay, there's all, you know, there's stone, there's wood, there's clay, there's whatever, right? It's a worker placing game. Okay, I put my meeple here. I get one wood. My next turn, I put a second meeple there. There's now two meeples there. I get two wood. On my next turn, if I put a third weaker there... Th- three wood, right? Mm. It's however many meeples are currently there when you collect. And so if you need a bunch of wood, you're, you're going to want to keep putting meeples in that spot. But then if someone sees you have four guys in one spot, easiest arrest I've ever made in my life. Nice. You know? And so there's really interesting stuff going in there. That, I mean, there's also, of course, a card mechanic, and there's this, there's all this other stuff going on in the game. But just the fundamental worker placement mechanic in that game is so different from any other worker place game I've ever played. I just was mesmerized mm-hmm. by it, and I loved it. Sounds cool. Yeah. So that's Have Architects. you been able to play the other West Kingdom games, Paladins nope, that's or Vikings? that's the Vicounts. only one I played. So here's what's funny is I own those two and haven't played Architects. <laughs> right. So <laughs> we're going to have to get together. Yeah, right. I haven't played West Kingdom any games. of those games. No. Yeah. Mm. But th- I always hear good things. Everybody seems to love yep. them, yeah. right? Shem Phillips? People, people yep. love Shem them. Phillips. And, and that sounds fascinating. seem to feel way different. Like, people clearly have a favorite. The only the thing it even remotely sounds like is Yido, and that's just because your characters can get, your, your workers can get arrested, arrested and you can, like, spring them. <laughs> but Yido is really just, like, a more complex Lords of Waterdeep. Gotcha. Uh, except there's, like, this beacon where, like, the police are going through, like, you, you can go to your different districts, you're going to get arrested if you're in when, like, mm. Oh, and so you're just a downright criminal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do anything to get arrested. It's not like <laughs> abomination like, where you murder people. It's like Andor. <laughs> but then you just pay three bucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's legal for a price. Legal for a price. All right. Uh, my number 36 is a number another game that I've only played once. It's also a worker placement game. This is an Uwe Rosenberg game. This is a big, epic game that I played once. I was blown away by it. And then I was like, who am I going to get to play with? Play this with again? And that's A Feast for Odin. Oh. Uh, a Feast for Famously Odin is French. incredible. And it, one of the things I like so much about it is just how open-ended it is. Like, here's this gigantic board of worker placement spots you can go to. Okay, go. There's like 30 spots. I've heard with the expansions, it gets and up to like way more yeah. than that. But there's so <laughs> many insane. different ways to play this game that it feels like a sandbox. Like, well, I'm going to go all in on this strategy this game. And then the next time I play, I won't even touch that. And I'll just go this way the whole game. And I like that open-ended feeling of I can take any path I want and still nice. have a competitive strategy. Um, the only issue is it's expensive. It's huge. It takes a while to play. It takes a while to set up. Uh, I think Bob has it. I own it. Haven't played it. Ugh. Let's fix that. <laughs> Make a note of no, these for Odin at Bob's. I, no, yeah, I, I just have haven't tracked it, it down because I was like the money, the time commitment, and getting people to play. Mm-hmm. I found it used. But I just don't care. It's so good. Good. Yeah. I That's need I to play this game you again. Recommended by your sister. It is oh. so good. I and love geez, the There's worst. a polyomino <laughs> aspect. That's what I was going to say. There, go ahead, Dan. Well, I, I, was mean, just, I haven't played it, so you yeah. can go more into it. But uh, I just love that it has the video game backpack polyomino yeah. thing going on where yeah, you're oh, yeah. as you're getting re- like the resource things you're like building them out of this thing and you're trying to be as you know efficient as you can with how that branches out and gets you things in there and i just i love how that works yeah they force you into like your stuff can only fit into this small square right and then you can cover the next layer of square and then the next layer. so yeah as you said you're literally building out as you go and that unlocks like more actions and different bonuses and Man, that is such a fantastic game. We got to force this to get played. I'm probably misremembering, but I swear I heard that with all the expansions, you can get up to like 50 worker players. That wouldn't surprise me. Like I said, base game's like 30 plus easily. Yeah. 
Yeah, it might even be more than 50 then because I just I, I remember someone talking about it and it's insane. So much stuff you My can do. My brother would love that game because it's a worker placement spot where you might never go to the same spot as another player. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah literally. You can totally ignore the other players. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's fine. Let me do my thing. You do your thing. <laughs> yeah. We'll see who does it better. Yeah, yeah. Totally cool with that. All right. So my number 35. This is a great, one of my favorite tile laying games. Uh, you're you're going to be pulling out a tile, and everybody else is going to take the same tile, and you're trying to get your people from the beach into the jungle. Karuba. Nice. <laughs> it's just, it's great. I, it is. It's uh, easy, it's very accessible, uh, but there's still like levels of strategy, right? Like, do, do I do a separate path for all my people? Do I just try to get everybody, you know, into funnel them into one path all together? Like, it's it's just a fun little game. Like, I, I haven't played this with somebody who didn't like. Let's do that again. You know, once they once they do it all once, they say like, okay, yeah, and you can play it again. Yeah, nope. 15 I can minutes. do it better. Yeah, yeah every yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that really game is only game. missing. Um, Two shrubberies, one so you can set a Slightly little higher, higher. Yeah, so you get a little path on the path, yeah, a path, path yeah. a path. Okay. I hate everything. <laughs> <laughs> I almost could have rated it higher. It's I don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really good. Yeah, it could have been like love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> so good, so good. Oh, my number thirty-five. I played uh, first at my sister's house. Uh, it is lovingly called between my friends and I. Hate in a box. Nice. This game used to be hard to get a hold of, yes. and thanks to Pandasaurus, they have done reprint. a reprint. And this is a game. Where uh, you need to have a little bit of a thick skin about the theme because it is historically based. Yes, right. Uh, and it is unfortunately accurate to yes. history. Uh, so Tammany Hall yes. is my uh, number thirty-five. In this game, you are you are vying for control of uh, well, either governor Elections. or one of the yeah. political offices in mm -hmm. New York, and you do that by manipulating the ethnic groups that are in New York City at the time. Yep. So take gangs in New York, like that area, without the gangs, uh, leave New York. <laughs> And you just have, uh, you know, just the corrupt politicians of that time. The artwork is amazing because it is uh, all of the political cartoons of the time. You trying to say politicians are corrupt? What? Breaking news <laughs> on the board game rundown. <laughs> I mean, only in like the late 1800s. Okay, not now, though. Not now. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Tammany Hall, they, they cleaned that all they out. And everything's all been yes. smooth sailing ever, ever since. since. That's right. Nobody has ever manipulated any other uh, voting group ever. <laughs> That's right. But no, it's a really interesting game that because like in fake news. Every, uh, every round, you basically after every round and you and you've seated the board mm -hmm. uh you then are now like if you've got more influence with different groups they're giving you more votes mm -hmm. and then you just go through and you do the elections in each in each area and sometimes you're kicking uh mm -hmm. certain groups out of this area and making them move over well, we're going to give some land to the spanish <laughs> and, the, and the portuguese but we don't want the irish yeah. right? <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly so anyways tammany hall is really Great good game. really fun mm -hmm. kind of mean uh but you know it's it's more just mean because you're just you've got to push people around to get what you need to do to win the game yep. and uh yeah it's a ton of fun i love it tammany hall 35 i i don't know why i didn't love it it was fine I, I don't know. Um, I am honestly kind of blown away that uh, it hasn't had a rethemed version just for the like the mass market kind of people. Oh, like, sure. Instead of like, because a lot of people aren't going to give a crap about that theme. Right. Mm -hmm. So saying like, oh, you're a gardener and you're trying to control which plants grow in the garden why, or something. Why, you what know, do you have like, against gardeners? Yeah, I need to move these me. roses over here. Yeah, you know? exactly. Oh, like, oh, roses. I'm not we're going to paint them red. I'm yeah. not, <laughs> different game. <laughs> I'm not oh. saying it needs it. I'm just surprised they yeah. haven't done it. Sure. Um, uh, we are on 35. 35. My 35 was 12 last time. 12. Little drop, just haven't played it in a really long time. I noticed most of your drops have been about like 20 points. Like the, you went from 30 to 50. And <laughs> everything else happened. Ready, you're like, oh, I got room for like, yeah, 20 yeah, more. I so played 20 new games. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like his, with the exception of like three games, his top 30 has been completely supplanted. That's right. Like, yep. With new games. I, new games. I, I, I honestly, I did, they're so good. Um, <laughs> and this is a uh, Stone Meyer game. And that is size. He's got one or two good ones. Bob, Bob yeah. talked about it uh, last episode, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and size, you guys probably know what it is. It's very famous, but it is like mm -hmm. an alternative history right after World War One. Yeah, yeah, right after they got rid of all the corrupt politicians. Oh, That's right. <laughs> and they, they brought the mechs in. Yeah. <laughs> Make a robot overlords. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <Never mind>. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so it's all term history where it's like kind of like picture World War One, and then there's Max. Yeah, <laughs> and that's basically what's going that's basically on. Basically, it stunning art style, uh, graphic yeah. style, and a everything. game made because of the art. Right, yeah. uh, resource management uh, had a new mechanic to me where you have your board of 
villainous uh, than did it, uh, where you have your board and your pieces here, and then on your next turn, you can go anywhere except where you started, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and then you just keep swapping locations. You have top actions and bottom actions that are uh, randomized together when you make your player board at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, just a fantastic game. Also, it's a tiny mechanic, so people always forget it's there, but also has the affected by your neighbors thing uh -huh. in it to where, like, uh, once Bob finishes, uh, once I have a certain track mm. full, whenever Bob takes certain action, I, I get something and everything. Yep. That's the end The recruit. Yeah. Oh, action. the recruit? Recruit. Yeah. Uh, well, you but, the recruit. But people, always, list, think, yes. people always forget that that's there. Um, and uh, just a fantastic, uh, fantastic game. I yeah, really like it a it's lot. Yeah, it's really good. It's good. It's really I good. agree. I love the game. You're going to have to wait a bit for me to talk <laughs> in depth about it. However, there's one mechanic that this game does that no other game does. I think it would totally revolutionize territory control. How come no other game has made it to where when you collect resources, they stay you on the keep board. them on the board? That's where they're at. The Manic, yeah. that's where you got him from. Yeah. You, that's the guy that's carrying All my them. oil is right there. So I'm if gonna, I defeat uh, him in battle, guess never, who resources on, they totally are? These are mine. unrealistic to history. What? Just because oil has been in one region we, does not mean that everybody fights over that one area that's got Jesus. oil. This There's true. nothing. It's true. never happened. Mm -hmm. Just check it. Why is it so <laughs> political today? <laughs> Because I brought up uh, Tammany Hall. Well, because we nationalized the supply. I'm trying what to think of what it is. <laughs> I have seen that. Don't get me going. <laughs> really? Yeah. I haven't. Please enlighten us. We were trying to think of another game in territory control where, where you the gain resources. resources well, I guess you're on right the board. That maybe it wasn't territory control, but I've definitely seen the resources you collect stay on the board. Or they can change hands after you yes, acquire sir. them and they mm -hmm. change. War room. Oh, well, there you Ooh. go. As you're building and producing things, they go underneath the factory, but then um, they'll be produced next round. But in between then, there's a battle phase, and if you take over that territory, when they become produced, you get to slap your country's logo right on there, and it becomes part of your army. I think <laughs> Mike wants to play War Room. If I'm thinking of the, I'll put that at the top of my list. <laughs> if I'm thinking of the right game, I think Via Nebula does that. I haven't played Via yeah, Nebula. Yeah, Tim Nebula. and I both bought it because we, we got it on a, on a sale. And um, I think in that game, the whole point is you're, you're getting resources, and then you have to make a path to where you have to take the resources too so you're dragging your resources along oh, with cool. you and then ah. someone else can like interrupt you um mm. but i don't know if they can steal them i haven't played it in a long time but i'm trying to yeah i'm trying well, to interrupting is rude yeah, yeah so it is. terrible game i agree as yeah. i was saying no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as we interrupt mike on his list or is this your no, list he was, so we're he was finally getting 35. 35 oh yeah that was that was mike high. interrupted you right. so um this is not a popular game with this group but this yeah. is my list my number 35 is Terraforming Mars. Oh, it's a good game. I don't want to play it with four or five players. Nope. nope. I would much prefer two or three. Or as one. As long as I have two or three. <laughs> you know there's a solo mode, um, right? <laughs> Yeah, I just... I don't, Highly recommend. I don't solo games. <laughs> Me neither. Um, but with two or three players, if I can keep this play uh, at two, two and a half hours, I enjoy Terraforming Mars quite exactly. a bit. I, I do. And it's just... It's it, fun to play. It's yeah. a very it good engine a, building fun, game, but it's it, not worth two hours. It to needs play. a zoo exactly. in space. I'm okay with two <laughs> hours. It took twice as long to play Ark Nova, no, and again, I enjoyed Terraforming no, again, Mars more. I don't mind two hour games at all. I'll play a five hour game. I don't want to play Terraforming Mars for two hours. Yeah, Correct. yeah. I don't, right. and I don't mean that as an insult. I just no. I don't want to play Terraforming and Mars. Now David's for two hours. fancy bits definitely help me because I like mm -hmm. at least I'm looking at something more pleasant, <laughs> sure. you know. But yeah, it's still hour and a half. Maybe I'll I'm change my mind when I play it again. But Ark Nova takes way longer. We well, played it was in, learning games. We played in like two two and a half hours when we learned Ark Nova. Yes, we. We booked like we slated what three to four hours. Yeah, for it, and we, we were done way ahead of schedule. Way ahead of schedule. I'll play so, again. We Maybe my rating prepared. will go up. I will say, um, I was late to the party on Terraforming Mars. My first play, I was like, eh. And then I played it again. I was like, oh, okay, I see the hype now. And maybe that'll happen with Ark Nova. That's I, why I I'm think, not dismissing it. Well, and I think for me, though, is is exactly what Dan just said. Like, I like playing Terraforming Mars solo because I don't want to spend three hours playing Terraforming Mars. Right. I'll also say this. I don't like playing games solo. Yeah. But, <laughs> totally fair. But I've played Terraforming Mars digital solo. Solo. Because it's against AIs. <laughs> But I played a full game of Terraforming Mars in 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. and even, but a even if you, game in 30 that's minutes. amazing. But even if you played it in an hour and a half, like I feel like Terraforming Mars would be would be really good if you mm. played it in an hour and a half. I, I kind of feel like the, my biggest beef with Terraforming Mars actually is like because the deck is so big and and your game relies so much on what cards you get. Oh, sure. sure. You know? That's you every engine junk. building game. But not necessarily, mm. the, not all decks are this tall. Mm. Ark Nova's is. It yeah, is. but it's, it is. But you're not as reliant on... Correct. There are other things that you can do. Yeah. yeah those cards aren't the crux of the game. I yeah. also have a game that has replaced Terraform Mars that I will cover later. I've okay. talked about it a lot. 
All right. Well, we'll see. So I still enjoy it, and that is why <laughs> it's my number 35. Thanks, Mike. We just talked five minutes about how you're wrong. Yeah. No, it's a good game. It's I a good game. I knew that was going to happen. No, no, it's a really good game. I just agree with... It slightly overstays it. welcome. Yeah. Oh, okay. and the box disintegrated. I carry it in a trash bag now. Yeah. Accurate. Oh, wow. Are you serious? <laughs> no. Oh, I was like, what happened? Uh, it's okay. made out of biodegradable things. And it's uh, biodegraded. It degraded already. It degraded. Right. I've owned the game for 2,000 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, number 34... There's a lot of complaints about this game, and I would not want to play this game at four or five players. But there is an expansion coming out. They're supposed to be addressing the major problem, which is the downtime in between games. Oh, I know what this is. Monumental. Oh. So this is a it's a it's a got a really unique uh, like grid deck building mechanic to it that I really enjoy. So it's slightly civish, where you're you know upgrading your society and whatnot, and there's area civish. control. Civish, <laughs> um, but the uh, you you, 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 deal, you, you deal out this three by three grid. Excuse me, and uh, on your turn, you're choosing like a row and a column to activate, and those are the cards that you're going to use and do your things. And then you'll remove those cards and then refill those spots in. And so you you keep building and upgrading your deck and trying to make your cards better to make get stronger actions and. I think that's just a really neat mechanic for a civilization type of game. But the problem is, is that sometimes it can take like literally 15, 20 minutes between turns. And if mm. you're playing with three or four Ooh. people, you can have a lot. Well, because you get to do all of your stuff. So they're changing it to where that's going to be, I can do an action, you do an action, and you go back yeah. and forth. But yeah. when I'm activating, you know, five cards and I have a lot of stuff yes. on the board, it can take a really long time between turns. That's why I think it's a good, great two-player game, right? Oh, sure. uh, because that way, you know, you're just dealing with the one other person. You're not mm -hmm. waiting forever. And then you, you can, your, action, your turns come more frequently. But you start getting three and four people and you're literally waiting around for, you know, 30 minutes for your turn to come around it, again. It's, it's insanity. It can be... I'm trying torture. to remember if I played this. I have or not. never... I, did. I have never been more angry. Because some of yeah. it sounds... <laughs> I'm familiar. familiar. I'm not kidding. But I think also, though, I don't want to play this until you get the faster version. And Correct. then I want to play The second sure, you sure. get that, I will gladly play it again. Yeah. But I played it with Bob, and I was waiting 30 minutes between my turns. Yeah. Listen, Bob players, is... Right? Wow. Bob just is... you and I. No, no. Just it was at I? least three, maybe four. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Bob is... I wouldn't want to do that. Again. Bob is not the worst guy in our group at this, but Bob can take a minute sometimes. Well, if I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, I've got to activate them all. You know, yeah. and, that, and that's that's the problem with a lot of the civilization type games because they say like, okay, activate your civilization. It's like, hold on, I have like eight cities, right. and they've all got armies, and they all got, this, and it just takes a long time to no, activate that was something everything. That was really nice about Mosaic. Yeah, yeah, because it's just one thing you do, one thing yeah. you do, and it keeps the turns going. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it might take a long time, but I got like eighty turns that game. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it feels uh, good. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Uh, my number thirty four is a game that totally. Just wiped another game off the map for me. This was one of the very first games that we uh, did as a review uh, for the Board Game Rundown. And I absolutely 100% recommend the Deluxe Edition of Oceans. Ooh, yeah. uh, this totally destroyed at least its own version, right? Uh, it destroyed Evolution for yeah. me. I loved Evolution. When Evolution came out, it was really hard. It's really mean, but I loved it. I was kind of obsessed with it because I love that engine builder of playing the traits on your, like creating your species out of the right. traits, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you've got to feed them, though. Are they vegetarian? Are they carnivores and stuff? And that game was really good and really hard, and there's like a runaway leader sometimes because somebody could just build this alpha creature and just wreck everything you put out. Yep. So you almost have to stop putting out good stuff to let that creature starve out, which is an interesting tactic but really hard to pull off but anyways oceans kind of fixes some of that because of the all of the different varieties of stuff and then because like so and, and then the um, other amazing thing that it does is it's got this core deck of like basic traits that you can have you know with like different symbiosis you know with like over here and i oh when you eat oh i get a little bit of something mm -hmm. oh did you do this this turn i get some of this mm -hmm. that's great evolution had that but uh oceans has more and then once you get to a certain point you get to start pulling cards out of the deep yeah. and the deep uh is a deck that's just as big but none of the cards repeat they're all unique. They're all unique. They all have crazy There's powered crazy shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> versions of, of not only the cards in there, but like completely unique powers and abilities. And uh, it is just such a fun engine builder. It yep. blew me away. The artwork is stunning. Uh, I just really enjoyed the deluxe edition and, and the way that you've got the tray with the food. And then as you're clearing out the different areas and you're kind mm -hmm. of manipulating 
you know, like where the fish go Correct. because it might trigger different cards to happen, you know, like in events that mm -hmm. might happen and stuff. And it is just such a great game and uh, was just blown, blown away. I was already in the bag for it. Cause it's like, Oh, like this could be like evolution. Great. Yeah. I love evolution, but it's like, no, no, no. Now I have a version of evolution that other people will want to play. Right. <laughs> so. uh, other cool thing too, is the deluxe version comes with sleeves. Well, oh, that's, that's something I was going to say. So was, that's one of the best deluxe versions I've ever yeah, seen so because good. it's Acrylic really good, fish. but the price is great. Yeah. yeah. For all that stuff. Yeah, for, for everything you get. It is one of the best deluxe. And I believe that is seen. North Star Games, yep. and it is it that is just good. fantastic. I absolutely yeah. love good, Oceans. Yeah, I actually, I hate Evolution, and I really like Oceans. It's like that drastic it's, of a thing. We played it at game night the other night, and Andrew said, oh, I hate Evolution, guys. And we are like, just give it a shot. Trust us. And he, 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 he was... Just being a jerk the first couple of rounds. He was just like, this is terrible. This makes no thematics. That's what? Blah, blah, blah. Andrew is being a jerk? I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Calm down. Um, but then like halfway through the game, he was like, it's starting to click. And at the end of the game, he said, oh, yeah, that was really good. Way uh, better. And we were like, see? Duh. Like, it just blows evolution out of the water. It does. My or main, into the water. Um, my main <laughs> issue with it was, and it's hilarious. Part of the reason I hate evolution so much is I find it way too mean. Uh, people it's really just mean. People stomp on you. And I don't like games that are like that. And then oceans. My biggest problem is I wish it was slightly meaner. Like when was, someone starts, really hard when to kill someone starts getting a self a self sufficient engine going, you're just like, oh, they won. Yeah. There's nothing we can now do you to can't stop interfere them. With it. Yeah. Like I really wish that I kind of wish it was when it when a creature runs out of food, it dies instead oh, of sure. having to end around with no food. Just right. when it runs out of food, because like then you could purposely start eating each other's creatures and like go for that. But it's just too easy. Mm -hmm. um, also, spoiler alert for people that uh, play oceans. Um, a creature cannot eat a creature that has no food on it. Oh, right. Someone yeah. did that the other day and they were totally cheating uh -huh. <laughs> and they blew everyone else out of the water on it. And like In two, two of us, the whole game were In like, water. that's probably not like allowed. Like that makes no thematic sense. And two people looked through the rule book. They couldn't find anything about it. So we just let it happen. They blew everyone out of the water. And then at the end, someone found it in the rule book. Oh, and there so, it is. So yes, you cannot attack a creature like like eat a creature yeah. that has no food on it. Right. It has just to to trigger one. its ability or exactly. whatever. Right. Yeah. Which makes it hard because sometimes that means you have to self cannibalize. Right. Well, someone had a self sufficient engine where they had a carnivore that was attacking their own creature had no food and then procking for food on every creature. Oh. And it was just doing, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, duh. and no. we were like that creature, like how's it? So it's eating nothing. Yeah. And then the, mm. and then the creature next to it is eating Ooh. nothing from itself. From the carnivore, and everything's it's like the emperor has food. no clothes. Like, do you like my clothes? I was, yes, I'm dressed in the same outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, not allowed. Yeah, because <laughs> um, that cool. is evidently an overlooked rule. I also really did not like evolution. So yep. hearing that, I will give oceans a shot. Yep. You yep. really should. I, yeah. I'd be surprised if you didn't enjoy it. It's it's really good because evolution is extremely mean. Oh, it's exactly. so mean. It is so mean. And that's a weakness for me. I it's hate like, that. oh, I got my best card out there, and it's gone. Yeah. And again, one person builds up this alpha carnivore, and it's just yep. so hard to take that thing down, you know? So, yeah. My 34, I have only played once, and I genuinely fear I will never be able to play it again. Uh -oh. And I hate it because it's one of the most amazing game experiences I've ever had oh, in my life. Yes. And that's U Boot, yes. the board game. Oh, we're Felix. playing this. Uh -huh. We're playing this. It I own it. You own it. Yes. Like, we need to play this mind. game. It is a submarine simulator. To where everyone has a different crew position, and like I was the navigator when we played, and I up and like I, we knew we were gonna play it, and for a week leading up to it, I was watching videos on YouTube of how to navigate a submarine because you actually need some knowledge. He's like, now been flagged by like, the federal government. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't need to like actually know how to do everything, but like you need to understand how the basic tools work right. because I had a mini map and I literally had like compasses and protractors, and I was having to I had Calculate to judge angles, uh, judge speeds. our speed, our depth and our angle and say it will take us about four hours to reach that destination right. plot on the map and then it's real time i mean fast forwarded but it's real time mm -hmm. so we're having we're submerged and and Ooh. bob is pulling up the periscope which is app driven so you literally pull up your phone and look and you see the ocean and you're literally spinning around with your phone <laughs> checking Looking the for periscope and stuff, yeah. and stuff and then like and we're traveling and we're listening to sonar and and when we get close to the three hour mark it's like okay we got to surface check periscope okay surface 
did Dan navigate us correctly? That's right. Are we, Where the hell is everybody, Dan? Are we There's nobody the here. <laughs> like, the cook has to prepare meals for yeah. everyone. There's morale booster. The map is literally a giant 3D submarine where uh, you move your people around yeah. inside the submarine. When there's broken things, you have to run around and prepare it. You can go up on top of the submarine when it's surfaced for smoke breaks to uh-huh. boost morale and stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've had in my life. Yeah. And I don't cool. know if I'm going to be able to do it again. And I'm yeah. so we got to try it. We got to try. It was we gotta so do cool. It. I went in. I we went we in played so for like five or six hours. It yeah. was it fantastic. Was mm-hmm. But again... You want to play that game for five hours. You yeah, don't want to play. Yeah. I don't. It's not even Terrible a game. Though. I just for, get lost in yeah. this world. No, it's I'm in great. For five hours. Yeah. You know, like uh, it's amazing. Dan, Dan's outside of the porch. Like it's time for another break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is you happening, smoke, dude? Yeah. Where did the accent come from? <laughs> what book was that part of? <laughs> um, okay, my number thirty-four. It better um, be at least as good as that. Um, well, in your opinion, no, but in the 11th iteration of Tim is wrong, my number 34 is foundations of Rome. Nice. We played this again yesterday. It's, uh, it just always goes over so well. Every time for everyone. You can teach it to casual gamers and they can pick it up and even play well. Yeah. The two people that had not played it, uh, beat Bob. First and second. Uh, in fact, uh, they played extremely well, like. Oh, I was he bad. Was, he did bad. <laughs> yeah, Real bad. bad. There were, alter, there were external factors. Uh, yeah, there, there, there were, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, uh, the, just the fact that the two new players, like, uh, they scored, like, in the 130s and 40s, which nice. is a very good score yeah. for that I game. Yep. Um, that's, um, I think my highest score is, like, 110, maybe. So, I mean, those are very good scores. Mm. But, um, yeah, I just like how elegant this game is. I, 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 the pieces help a, a lot, of course. I've said multiple times, I, sign me up for a cardboard version. I'd still enjoy every bit of it. But I just like the tension of not knowing, uh, am I, I need to get my properties adjacent to each other. And, ooh, G4 just came out. Ooh, he doesn't have enough money to buy it. Ooh, Dan could buy it. Is Dan going to buy it? And like, Well, you know what? Dan has it. Here, I'll just insta-bribe him for that well, spot anyway. Then there's a Boom. module where you can just steal people's Boom. property. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mo- That same module... <laughs> Uh, it's stealing. Uh, that <laughs> oh, same there's... module also introduces trading, which, of course, I love. I'll give you this one for this one. I could throw in some coin, or mm-hmm. maybe we could swap these two. Uh, Is that I the just... same module where when you're winning by, like, 20 points, and then you can just take away somebody's objective? No, that's, that's a different module. The objective module is different. Only, and then completely <laughs> wreck. Demolish. Like, Demolish. so it was, like, literally a 40-point swing on versus a player who has played before and was already winning. Yeah. And then, in all fairness, it wouldn't have helped you. No, but it wouldn't have helped <laughs> That's him. That's bitter, man. That's real bitter. <laughs> it wouldn't have helped him. It didn't That's help true. him. He was already, I was already winning. winning by a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't need it. Yeah, no, I, it, it was a total jerk move. He's a we bit were, of a jerk. we were twenty <laughs> minutes into the game yesterday, and Bob steals my property. I know. Like, and then the next so, turn, he was like, "Man, we should have traded for those." He's like, <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> well, he, ne- he never asked me to trade he just stole it he never even <laughs> made it apparent that he wanted it i knew he wanted it he but did. he like never mechanic. said that mm-hmm. and um oh. so then two rounds later i stole one from him so oh, i yeah. stole back Listen. but then another player stole from me again so i got stolen from twice yeah. the north um, remembers. I, bit, <laughs> I guess i know buying good property go figure mm-hmm. but yeah there's just um it, for what it accomplishes it doesn't take that long. Nope. It's elegant. Mm-hmm. Um, it has tension because mm-hmm. other players are building around you, and what you build next to people is Matters. the biggest part of the game. Like your largest scoring buildings are scoring based on what you put them next to. So mm-hmm. you're paying attention to what other people are building, and and man, it's just really good. It's a good. Oh wait, game. that's the no, first on, thing you said on. that yeah, I disagree. It's with. really good. Okay, let's go on to the next number, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, you're I'll, 33. I'll, I'll 33. poop on it when he gets to it. Yeah. Um, so what, yeah, Foundations of Rome. That's yeah. another game I that's <laughs> in this segment that I don't own. Actually, that is the mm-hmm. third game in this ten. Well, I in don't all fairness, own. only people with mansions own that game. Like Blood on the Clock Tower. <laughs> oh, I'm working on getting a copy. A Fairly mansion. cheap. Of what? Foundations. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Sundrop. Hell yeah. Well done. I approve, I'll buy it for I approve this message. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> yes. Uh, Actually, I'll steal it. <laughs> Dang it! But you better be coin. giving me four here's points. Here's this coin. <laughs> Looks like a quarter. Four uh, points. 
So, uh, if you're in our Discord, uh, I talked about this a little bit. And the problem with Mike is he recommends games that I end up liking and then I have to buy. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. So, this is one of the games that, oh, I know what this is. that Mike recommended to me. I think I do too. They ended up buying, but fortunately, it was cheap enough. Uh, long shot, the nope. dice game. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a that'll board. That's not the only one on here that Mike has recommended. <laughs> I was like, it's, gonna be that, it's that low? No. No. So did you not play it at um, Origins? Origins? You didn't play it at Origins? Like, we all played it at Origins. Uh, I don't think I played it with you guys at Origins. Okay. Because mm. Mike had it, and he kept trying to push it, push it, push it. We played it with Jason and Katie. Yes, I know. I just yeah. No, know I remember there, you guys posting oh, pictures shit. from Origin, and I'm like, Tim, bring me a copy. I need this game. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he failed. I did. Um, yeah. But I was like... Ah, this oh, game's gonna be Tim. awesome. I need this. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. But anyways, it's yeah, it's a great game. You're you're, you're rolling dice. Uh, the one of the die represents one of the horses, um, and then the other die has got um, a number on it. And then you can, um, you got like a little bingo card. You're knocking off spots. You um, also each horse has uh, numbers on the bottom, to where if that if that horse moves, it moves other horses along with it, mm. uh, and it's just. It's a really neat little uh, almost like a roll, like a rolling right. It was fun. Say, yeah. Hi, I'm Dan. I don't like gambling games, and I don't like rolling rights. <laughs> this I, game was good. I like. <laughs> I didn't love it though. I yeah. like gambling games. I don't love rolling rights. This game was fine. I didn't hate it. I like Tim. Ready, set, bet was better to me. It's more fun. Agreed. So, Ready, set, bet is is more. I fun. agree. I think this one has more strategy to this one than there is. In there is a lot okay. more strategy in this game. That might be why I don't like it too, because you're already combining two things I don't like, and then strategy. also I have to like really think and try, yeah. as opposed to just like have dumb have fun. Dumb fun. <sighs> yeah. So that's fair. Yeah, Dan doesn't like as as will be as I will. Uh, show with the next game on my list. Uh -huh. Dan doesn't like games with like heavy strategy. Right, no. Never this, have. <laughs> this game will not be in like Dan's top Meanwhile, ten. let's play U-Boot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I so, love this game and it is one of my most played games this year. So Long Shot the Dice Game is long yours. Shot. Yes. So my number 33 is a game that Dan hates. I can never get him to play. He will never play this game, but it's probably in his top 10, if not top 5, and that is Twilight Imperium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing you don't with like Dan. strategy. I'm just messing with Dan because he's talking about, oh, I don't want to think. It's like, I, and this is a game that uh, if you know, you know. This dropped dramatically. It did. It did. And I think, uh, I think it's just like I need to play it some more because uh, we did talk about, you know, like great experiences, uh, perfect conditions. Uh, but this has fallen. But I think if I got, I haven't played it like a year, I guess. So sure. if I got to play it again more and like just kind of revive my love for it. I have third edition. I would love to get fourth edition, but I'm never getting rid of my third edition because yeah. I will always own a copy of this game. Right. This game's fantastic. It's, it gets crapped on by people that don't want to spend five hours playing a game. I will play this game for five hours yeah. with the right it, group of it's people. An experience. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Not every game is worth five hours, but this game, not only does is the mechanics and what you're doing feel worth it, but it flies by, man. So, it, it does you're not just, feel like five And again, hours. like this, another game where there's these crazy stories, whether right. it is, I don't know how 10-sided dice work or... <laughs> <laughs> or just like uh Well, you were there for the last game where Jesse and I no, had I that wasn't. insane ending. Oh, I thought you were no, there. No, I wasn't oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was oh, there. you were there. I Jesse there. and I had an insane ending yeah. that came down to a tiebreaker because we made a deal on the last ha -ha, game. And yeah. Caleb was like yelling at us. And Jesse and I were both like, I I don't know if I'll win, but it's better to instead of trying to fight each other, I think it's literally more strategic for both of us to shake hands and see how the tiebreaker uh -huh. pans out. Because, like, if I lose this combat, I definitely lose. Right. But if we make this deal, I, might I have a chance. Yeah. <laughs> and it literally came down to him beating me by, like, one. Yeah. But that's, it was insane. Again, though, right? That's the amazing thing about this game. There's a ton of different factions. Uh, you know, and there's way asymmetric player powers. Yeah, it, well, it's not even player power. It's play style oh, almost style. in that yeah, game. Yeah, you yeah, know, like yeah. it's just like it's so different. Yeah, but. just the way you have to use your civilization. And so if you're if you're not keen on getting one randomly, then go through them and find one that you feel like is going to suit the game the way you want to play. The, the way you want to play. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's negotiation. The way that you you take you decide what action mm. you want to you know do and that with the initiative and all that good stuff and the way that those all fire off. I just. There's so much to this game, and it is so good. There's mm. tech trees. You know, fourth edition even does a really good job of streamlining it. I can't Hardcore. remember yeah. all of the differences, uh, but fourth edition actually improves on third edition. I will always have third edition because that's the one I have right now. It's the big sure. old coffin box. Yep. Huge. I would, I would, I would if if I get my hands on a fourth edition, I'm still not getting rid of my third edition unless it's to like trade it for, for a fourth, fourth edition. edition. 
Uh, but I, I just love it. I love the artwork. I love the theming and the style of it. It's just an absolutely fantastic game that I know Dan hates and won't rank in his top 10. Yeah, uh, just didn't make it. It's yep. too bad. It's, it's rough. It's a rough yeah. one. Uh, no, it's it's freaking fantastic. I love it. I love big war epic games, you know, and as many short games as I have on the list, don't be fooled. Like if we get like a really good epic mm-hmm. battle, I'm in. I'm there for it. Like, and, I, and I'm down. I'm down to clown. Let's do it. Uh, so my 33 is Twilight Imperium. I had a brain oh, sorry. fart. Sorry, Dan. Uh, off yeah. <laughs> my 33 is going to disappoint a lot of people, and I just don't <laughs> care. I just don't care. You know what's not in my top 50? Root. You know what is in my top 50? Vast. Vast. <laughs> I love Vast, and no one's played it, and it annoys the it. hell out of me. Root didn't um, make my top 50, but I, it is a, a fantastic game. I haven't played this. Uh, Vast is a slightly messier, more interesting version of Root. Um, mm-hmm. It was it was like the... the um, Root the prototype. Right. It was like the prototype for Root. Um, it, the way the mechanics work is a little messier um, and harder to teach, and the main reason for that is because... In Root, everyone has their asymmetric play style and powers and everything, but then the end goal is get 40 points or whatever, right? To where in Vast, everyone's play style and everything's completely different, but then also the end goal is completely different. has nothing to do with each other. So, like, if you're the dragon, you're trying to wake up, eat goblins to become more powerful and escape the cave. Mm -hmm. If you're the knight, you're going into cave to slay the dragon. So you're going in and you're finding treasure and stuff like that, and you're trying to level up so that you can go slay the dragon before you can escape. If you're the goblins... This knight has come into your home. You live in this cave. So your goal is kill the knight, right? So you're going around. You have a bunch of different units that you're kind of crowding around and trying to get the knight's way and kill him. Um, There's a thief in there that's all about um, stealing items and stuff from each other uh, and wants to get out with a certain amount of uh, gold and everything like that. And then one person plays as the cave. The best one. It's uh, the so, one I'm most fascinated it's, with. I know, it's Haven't so played. It's so fun. You're slowly growing yourself and getting bigger and bigger. And also, you're placing the thing. So, like, oh, that knight's really going to want that treasure chest? I guess I'll put it at the very end of this extremely long one-way hallway. Where, where no goblins Do you are want at. it, knight? Because if you go all the way out there, I might crush you. <laughs> all right? Because then once the cave, once the last piece of the cave is put on the board, then he starts collapsing in and trying to kill everything that's inside. And he wants to kill everything and sounds so cool you know the cave um but it's just it's so crazy asymmetric there is nothing in the game that like there is nothing that i am doing that will have anything like what you're doing so each player really needs to understand their own role going into it which is rough to teach um there's like a two-sided full page player aid for each person to kind of like not only how you play but tips and tricks Mm -hmm. and stuff like that right it is so crazy so in depth and it's amazing if you like asymmetric games it's gonna feel slightly less balanced than root because again it was their first time trying to do that i don't always care about balancing as if you have a good time well and i've played quite a few times and i've never felt like anything was broken i will say though like goblins are way harder to play than like knight Mm -hmm. right that's like the biggest balancing problem like whoever's Mm -hmm. the best gamer should probably play the goblins you know like whoever's the newest gamer should probably play the knight maybe the dragon they're pretty easy too yeah Yeah. but anyway vast the crystal caverns by leader games is just a fantastic game that i don't know i don't know if i know anyone else that's played it other than obviously my family who i taught (laughs) oh weird so now you know a bunch of people (laughs) all lies uh i do i will say i'm missing one of the player aids so i'd have to print out a new one because uh my dog destroyed it um and i don't have access to it right now so, but okay. other than that, um, this is a crossover with Dan. He already mentioned this game today. Ooh. Uh, this is another game I do not own. Mm. And this is another one of my anytime, any place. If you want to play Planet Unknown, ah. I oh, am yeah. down. Nice. And it's so funny because Bob and I played this and Foundations of Rome just yesterday. Nice. And I still God, give the nod. Name. I still give the nod to Planet Unknown. I like how every play feels completely different. So that I, means Foundations of Rome is not on your top fifty. What? You just said you give the nod to Planet Unknown, which means you like Planet Unknown more than Foundations of Rome. Right. <laughs> so Planet Foundations of Rome isn't in your top fifty. I'm not following your logic. I just talked yeah, about he just it. Mentioned yeah, it. Oh, that was yours. It was my number <laughs> four. Oh, the- <laughs> 
<laughs> I had a Bob moment. Yeah. I was what like, happened? Hi, Tim. You want to come on the right side of the table? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Bacchus is over there like, I'm still not following. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, man, I could have swore he just mentioned that. I'm <laughs> so glad I just derailed this whole conversation. Tim just, Tim just assumes that when I talk, it's actually Bob, and he's yeah. uh, projecting. I'm yeah, also yeah, yeah. not We're the same lie. person. I'm just going to interject for a second and say, I actually think Plan Unknown would be way higher, but I thought of it last second and threw it on the list somewhere. Mm. Like, so I love this game, but continue. yeah, yeah please talk about it's it. It's just really good. I, I like combos in games and this game, like, oh, I can move this track and then that allows me to move any track. Oh, okay. I'll move this track. And that allows me to place, uh, place a biomass tile. And it just, man, the, the polyomino aspect of mm. it and trying to fill up your entire board. Meanwhile, you're trying to push certain tracks and they can combo off of each other. Planet Unknown is really good. I yeah. have a blast playing that game. I'm probably going to try to track down my own copy. Yep. Even well, though there's two in the group, it's just that sometimes. good. doesn't matter. Because you can play this it. with anybody. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I, I yep. want to get a copy and like take it to Christmas and like yeah. show yeah. my mom the and dad. Simultaneous play is, is a great draw because yeah. like, everybody's doing something all the time. You're right. not like sitting around waiting well, for Well, And time. it has so many. We talked about this earlier. So many choose your difficulty mechanics. Yep. What yep. do you want to do? Like, not only, uh, like, uh, it's just so good. Not only the stuff we talked about with the different sided things and everything, but then also, oh, maybe have the new players sit next to each other so that the new players are fighting over the goal between them, mm. yeah. right? That way, uh, they don't need to fight against a pro they're at the not, game who they're knows not competing how to take with advantage a of that. Yeah, yeah sure, like, sure. there's so many things in that game that help balance that out. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Good uh, very, very good, good game. Good pick. Good pick. Good All pick. right. 32. 32. Bob. is me. All right, so 32, uh, this is another game that I learned down at, I believe it was JuliaCon, because I learned a lot of games down there. Uh-huh. Uh, Genotype, a oh. Mandela genetics game. I've not played. Uh, nope. I taught it to Mike. Uh, Mike didn't have a very good first experience. It just did not work out for him. Who taught you? It was not my fault. There was one. <laughs> it, was, it was not a teaching moment. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's, it's great, because you're... Uh, <laughs> you you're rolling dice. You're trying to uh, you line them up according to color onto the appropriate like uh, genome, and you're trying to splice things together to make beans, right? And uh, or peas, peas. I think they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just a neat. It's based on real science, and uh, it's it's unique. Like you get these different tools that you can use. To make you t uh, take different dice, swap them. You can manipulate the genomes to have like uh, different chromosomes or uh, is it chromosomes for. Uh Let's uh, say yes and move on. Let's just yeah. say yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, but there's like recessives and dominants, right? And so you can make it. Oh, now you're gonna. Uh, I know the cards I'm trying phenotypes. to do are phenotypes. Phenotypes is that the word? It's one of the words. It's the sciencey <laughs> word. We're gonna go with that sciencey yeah, word. Yep. And the uh, cellulose and the uh, no. science. <laughs> uh, but you can uh, like science. Uh, just manipulate oh, the science. -y. Yeah. You can manipulate that the different types of, of uh, <laughs> genomes that, that are going civish. on. Uh, but yeah, it's a great kind of worker placement game. But the thing is, it gets really tight at max player count. So I would right. probably recommend at like what is it? I think it maxed out at five is the yeah, five. It does. So I would play it at three to four. I wouldn't go with five. Because the think thing is, there's no. It doesn't add any extra spots. You're just competing for those places. So it's better with like three. Peas in the pod versus five. Yes, pods. <laughs> three to four peas in your pod is about the max you want. To I'll go show with. myself out. <laughs> Thanks. Somebody, well, somebody that. peed in my pod when we played this. It wasn't me. It was Chris. <laughs> no, it wasn't him. It was just the nature of the game. Like, well, the what, dice weren't coming up for you, and then you didn't do anything to manipulate the I, genomes. I had ways to home. mitigate. I didn't have enough Play ways better. to mitigate. I thought one method of mitigation would be enough. But instead, I needed two or three methods because we rolled the phenotypes that I needed. I couldn't use any of them. So here I am with this card or my plant that I had planted. I needed specific phenotypes to uh, to like harvest big R, it. R. Yeah, yeah, to harvest it. And um, it wasn't there. So here I am going into the last round, and I accomplished nothing. Like, I couldn't. I had oh, cards in my so hand, <laughs> and I couldn't use them. I had one here. I couldn't finish it. So all the cards in my hand, dead. And I underestimated how much mitigation you needed on the dice rolls. So mm -hmm. play Important. again. I may like it more, but sure. I vastly underestimated certain aspects of that game. Oh, and that left like me that. with a round where I could do nothing. So uh, Mitochondria. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so no. my number 32 Phenotypes. is a game that I would have... That was very science-y. Would have... <laughs> my number 32 is a game that I would never in a million years ever thought I would like. 
and I absolutely love it. It is my number one racing game of all time. I don't like NASCAR. I love Thunder Alley. Thunder Alley. Thunder Alley. Holy smokes! This game is amazing. It's funny. It is the 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 uh you because you you it doesn't matter if you win the race. It is how it is where you place in the race by how many points because you have a team of cars, right? Oh, so you just sure. need more cars to finish higher. Right. So if you come in. Third, third fifth, fourth, and sixth. Yeah. You're better than oh, the guy that came first and twenty third. Yes, right. yes. And there's all in the in the way because you're going to play cards, which are going to determine which. Well, first you're going to determine which car you're going to activate, and then you're going to play a card, and you're going to do like a racing maneuver. So you might do a maneuver where you separate yourself from the pack, and maybe you move out and you move up, right? Slick or shot. Maybe you do a maneuver where you bring everybody that's behind you with you. Mm -hmm. So you're manipulating and there's different like uh, levels right to the track. You know, they think there's what, three or four three different. Or four or like that. And, and, and so you can like move out and you bring a whole group or maybe I'm leaving this group behind or maybe I've got two cars like further back in this line. So I'm bringing them up. And there's also the, the cards you play. There's wear and tear on your cars. So you have to there's like permanent damage and damage you can you can take off by doing a pit stop. So you can pull into the pit, and so that that some cars are going to pass right. and, and get a little bit further, but you're going to be able to knock off all that other damage, and then you can bring your car back out, and now you're back in the race and running. Uh, I think this game could really benefit from like a Talladega Nights expansion. Oh, right if you're not first, you're last. That's right. You know, like shake and bake. Shake you know, you and two bake. cars move yeah. out and do a little slingshot action. Oh, my gosh. Like, that would just be hilarious. I would be back into this game. <laughs> oh what is that called like that. when you're driving right behind another car and using Tailgating? broken Tailgating. air? Drifting. Oh, drifting. drifting. Or Dr drafting. Drafting. It is drafting. drafting. Yeah, this drafting. game has drafting in it. Yeah. It's not like it a... <laughs> it's a drafting game. It's a drafting <laughs> game. <laughs> now what you're thinking. Uh, now, so, now what you think. I love race games. This is one of those games where the theme alone, I'm just like, meh. But I'm going to have to play it. My yeah. wife is fantastic at this game, and yeah, she doesn't nice. like it. Oh, never mind. I'm like, how do you not love this game? You've won every single time you've played it. She's like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, this game's great. It's too easy. Yeah, yeah. it's too easy. The uh, worst thing about it is all I do is turn just isn't <laughs> There are uh, multiple maps that come in the board. You know, nice. so different tracks. They all go left. Use. The uh, driving real fast and going the, left. The cars ha do have like sort of a little bit of a theme with the color. There's some jokes in there, Easter oh, egg sure. jokes in there, uh, depending on the uh, the the cars you use, uh, the team you use, and there's also like so depending on player count, uh, depends on how big your or small your team is as well. <laughs> So. Cougar in the back seat, move ahead three spaces. <laughs> got to outdrive that Cougar. But man, uh, Thunder <laughs> Alley is just a really good game. I absolutely love it. Didn't think I would love it, but man, I love it. It's so. a heavy box. It is a heavy. There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. So yeah, I'll, we'll play that sometime, man. Okay. It's it's a lot of fun. Gladly. A lot of fun. Dan, thirty two. My thirty two. You know, sometimes you just get a game that just replaces another game. Uh huh. And you're just like, I don't need to play that game. For instance. Terraforming Mars. Oh. Um, so by Rio Grande, uh, Rio Grande made a game called Underwater Cities. Yeah. And I get pushback comparing it to Terraforming Mars. No. Because there's there's not a whole lot of mechanics in 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 like that are similar, but I get the exact same feeling. I feel like I it's more like games. Terraforming Mars than Ark Nova is, in okay. my opinion. I haven't played it. Um, so the basic premise is everyone has a player board and it is an underwater city <laughs> and you are creating cities like domes on it and you're connecting them with bridges. And when you get to things and cover things, you get resources, stuff like that. It is a hardcore, um, not even just resource uh, management, but like resource conversion. I tend to like resource conversion games, but, um, it has the like card tag Mm -hmm. system from mm -hmm. terraforming mars but on top of all that it's also a worker placement game mm -hmm. um you, you're you are putting uh these little like locked symbols on these worker slots and that decides what actions you can take on your turn and that's actually huge because like imagine so terraforming mars you have those cards that um you take a act you take a turn to like say i'm activating this card right and it like creates things or whatever like that mm -hmm. right in like in underwater cities, there's just like a worker placement slot that lets you do that. So like if someone else goes there, you're not activating that card this turn, right? So that adds that element to it as well. I also just find it far prettier. I it love is. the look of the 3D player board as you're yeah. building it with the different colored domes. And when you get the domes and, and stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, it has the thing to where one side is the same, but you flip it over and people have asymmetric nice. player boards um, that you're working towards. That's always a nice thing. It has a card market. Uh, there's different There's different markets, like a base one and then like an end game scoring market that you can get cards from that are more expensive, of course. It just has a lot of stuff going for it. And like I said, 
I find the underwater theme not only cooler than the Terraform Mars theme to me, but um, also just way prettier game. I love mm-hmm. all the blue and stuff that's on it and the components that, that come in it. Yeah, Underwater Cities is a great game. But uh, anyway, yeah, it honestly, and that's the crazy thing, it also plays pretty long. I don't know if it plays as long as Terraform Mars, but it plays pretty long, mm-hmm. but I just don't feel it when mm-hmm. I play this game versus Terraform Mars where I, I feel every second. And then the problem, too, with Terraform Mars to me, a problem, is uh, the better way to play the game is the drafting way. And that adds 20 minutes to the game. Oh, sure. (laughs) So uh, that's just rough. That's rough. So anyway, Rio Grande, Underwater Cities uh, gives me the same feeling, and I prefer it. It's good. It's really good. I just haven't played it yet. Yep. Yep. It's on my shelf, though. Nice. Okay. So uh, I said my theme of the day was Lords. Uh Uh-huh. So we're going to dip our toes back into that Lords theme. Toe. Uh, Not a finger. Nope, okay. not not yet, Dan. Okay. Hold, okay. whoa, hold your horses. Okay. Okay. We're going a, di- a slightly different route here. So the first time I ever got to play with these guys, I've talked about this before. Mm. We were over at Spencer's house. Never mind. And yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Dan's back in. I begged whoa. Tim to play this game, and well, we. You did, you barely had to beg. You were yeah. like, wait, wait, "Can we play?" Arm, and wait. I already <laughs> had it set up. <laughs> <laughs> Because this game will not show up on my list in a few weeks. <laughs> Dan, right? Not happening. I don't think it this is. game is responsible Everyone for... Everyone watching is like, what the hell is it, This guys? game is responsible they for know, a bunch of friendships. Lords oh, of Hellas. Woo! Uh, there's a lot to like about this game, but I like that it looks epic, and it is epic. Yes! And it feels epic. And yes. I'm traversing across this map, Greece. and if I can control so many <laughs> territories... <laughs> Um, I, I, I can trigger the end game that way Zeus. or I can, or I can build up my resources Hermes. and I can start building this gigantic monument, which happens to be this massive, incredibly detailed miniature of Zeus hold it, holding an electric Zeus. whip. I went too early. It just, uh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. And it's so tense. Cause like it builds towards this epic ending and you're like, ooh, I could finish this in-game trigger, but I've also got this one in my back pocket in case this one fails. And then the game ends and you're like, oh, it's so close. And then three other people are like, oh, it's so close. One turn. Because everybody's one turn away yes. and they got their toes dipped into like two different in games all yes. at once. If you're smart, you do. <laughs> my goodness, what a fantastic game. It's the reason I un- intelligently went and backed Lords of Ragnarok because I think both of you guys did. I didn't, so I'm glad you did. Okay, good, because I was still new to the group, and I'm like, I I don't want to ask them what they're backing yet. Okay, three of us have that game coming, but I can't wait. It's so good. While Dan and I are like, yeah. Hey, hey guys, I got a copy of Lords of Ragnarok available. Um, (laughs) I genuinely will look into that. I Uh, cannot wait to play it. But um, no, man, what a great game. Holy cow. I'll talk about this game in a few weeks. I have a couple awesome. things I'll throw on really quick. First of all, the first time my mom played this, she won. And it just shows you like how easy it is for like new players oh. to just get in it and win. She loved it. She's been asking to play it again ever since. She really liked it. It was just a game she grabbed onto. I the, the multiple ways of winning, are it just feels so good in that game to have such a variety of ways to win and ways to work towards it. The action selection system in that game is such a cool system mm-hmm. with the whole covering it up and then having to wait yes. for the year. That's oh, such I love a cool that. system. You take that and, build monument action to pull yeah, your stuff back. And honestly, my biggest pro for this game maybe it's such a weird pro in a lot of games that have a lot of miniatures like jason will complain about this you are just buying the plastic because it looks cool and in lords of hellas every miniature is useful and and improves gameplay Mm -hmm. these giant miniatures yeah they look amazing towering over the board and they're thematic to have these giant towers you know hovering over greece and everyone just sees them and they're you're these puny hoplites that see that and everything but then also as you're building the monuments throughout the game, you're literally building the monuments piece by piece, and they get taller and taller and more powerful mm-hmm. as the gods have more control over the realms with their so with their towers. And then the like city, the expansions you get with the cities and the I don't know what they're called, the churches, yeah, I temples, don't know what they're called, temples. temples. Um, 
it's just like a terrain expansion that comes out for a lot of games. But in this game, it drastically makes the game easier to understand with having, you know, where the cities are, where the temples are, where the main, like, Sparta city They don't Sparta get covered by is. people on the map. Your, your armies literally slide into a slot on them, just like on the on the monuments. Mm. They slide into a spot mm. on them so you know exactly what's going on. So good. The, the miniatures for this game, like the terrain miniatures for this game, are amazing and almost necessary, I think, to improve the game. So this that's game, just a huge plus. This game put Awake and Realms on the map for yeah. me. And, and, and deservedly so. Oh, 100%. It's amazing. I mean, the miniatures al alone, well, box art too, but miniatures alone are why I made that the number two on my favorite components list. Right. Mm -hmm. It just, those massive monuments you are building you literally build piece here's by a piece. base and then here's the legs and here's their torso and here's their arms with the sword they're holding oh man it just it feels great man that's such a good game yeah, it is. that is a very cool concept i do like that all right so last one of the day bob better make it good day. all right let's see what i can do <laughs> good luck yeah well dan actually oh <laughs> This game, oh, my pen stopped working all of a sudden. Never mind. Can't do it. My pen stopped okay. working. Tim. Tim. Cool. <laughs> I got it. Uh, so this takes two things that Dan loves. Mm -hmm. Rolling rights. Oh. <laughs> 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 and Twilight Imperium. And makes Twilight Inscription. Ooh. Uh, I've only played this game a couple of times, but... Man, I really love like the depth of this roll and write because I'm a big fan of roll and writes, and there's just so much going on. The little like kind of chalk like markers are super cool. Uh, the biggest downfall I have with this is like some of my people that I play games with aren't the most, uh, we'll say, ethical, and they'll do whatever it takes to win. Oh, so that's not really, cool. Yeah, it's not cool, and that's why they're like I won't play this game with some people because like I've seen I've played other like co-ops with them and see them fudge things in their favor to try to make their oh, character cool. No, or no like that. way. Yeah. yeah, that's what you're talking so, about. So yeah, mm. I, I I'm not gonna like play this game with some of them. So which means we need to get together and play this game more often because I want to play this. This game might more. be my game of the year. Yeah, like just saying when we but get to game fantastic. of the year, this yeah. is there's so much going on. And I want to play it some more. Like. All the different things that you can do with this roll and write mm, are I love this amazing. Game so, so many much. different styles on each of the four boards that you have. It's it's super cool. I love this game yeah. so I, much. I need to play this more, and I know that's a positive for you. Mm. But I just I this just didn't make my top fifty, and I loved it. Um, and I just I don't know why. I mean, again, roll and writes. I don't love them. I did think this was a really good one. Mm -hmm. uh, the theme is definitely there. I am still worried that that one, the bottom right board is, super is, is too powerful mm -hmm. i am still worried about that but who knows i run a, um, i want to win with a war strategy next yeah no i know that's like, I, I think wanna, that's what i, I tried to do that. last time but my opponents were difficult <laughs> but, you're uh, welcome yeah um but uh i don't know why i didn't make my top 50 yeah. uh, i don't know it's it's really good yeah i friggin' love this it game it did make my top 50 yeah, nice. I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about it later. I figured you guys would, but yeah. Uh, I haven't played it as much, which is why it's not quite as high as it probably could be, but yes. Yeah, I think that game's fantastic. Yep. I absolutely love it. I hate the fact that, and, and I get it, it is it is what it is, but I hate, like, why do people just have to not, like, just play the game. It's a game. Mm -hmm. like, just, I know. It's Just play the game. you lose, you know, so what? Like, I, yeah, I just, I don't. No, yeah. yeah. It's one thing if it's like, oh, we're just house ruling because we don't like this rule, but to cheat, like, to right. actively, like, like yeah. Yeah. No good. Not good. No. I'm out. I'll, I'll say this because I have my pub meeple open in another tab. Um, now I will say I only reorganize the top fifty to make it more accurate. Uh, so you know these could be fudged, you know, up and down a couple. <laughs> oh, but terrible. um, but Twilight Inscription is at sixty-seven from yeah. the pub meeple. Okay. Thing. So it is up there. I yeah. like. No, it I I also find that that's a fair rating for you know if limited access to it. Sure. You know, and uh, mm. uh, also that it's a rolling, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a great game. All right. Uh, so my 31 is also a new to me this year game. Well, new this year game. And uh, you know everybody. <laughs> no, it's my father's work. I, my yeah. father's work is my 31 is just an incredible worker placement game that uh, not only where the, uh, where it's got the unique aspect to it where your different types of workers can do basically go to different areas, right? Right. You, you can't the send your, to the town. You, you're creepy you can't looking. send your creepy butler to the town. You know, right. he has to stay back there. Uh -huh. You know, you might lose your wife if you get too crazy. But you have know. enough money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, and, and then the way that you play through the ages, right? Through the generations. Yes, that is and, so cool. And how that changes the board the state. Yeah. And not just the board state, but like, I... I don't know how this happens, but I know I've, I heard one little spoiler because somebody was talking 
about it on a podcast that I was listening to. And it wasn't like that big of a spoiler, but like their game of the same version we played went in such a different area and created such a different atmosphere. Right, and you're like, yeah. what the hell decision How did they, they make? Right, to <laughs> make that did, happen. How did yeah. they get to where that was happening? Right. I mean, it was, had to have been involved with those little side quest cars. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because the ones we were doing, we we played the one that was basically like with the plague, or like right. yeah, there was a yeah. plague that comes. Starting and, one. And do we build a hospital and things like that, right? right? Like, those are that's very generic and very... If you play with scenario one, you will learn these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the very first iteration. Yeah, yeah. But like how the map can change based on what you do, and like how well you do it, and the engine building aspect of like your uh, your gain knowledge that you, then you pass down through the generations yes. as you record it in your tomes, mm -hmm. and just the different style of workers and the way that and the the ease of uh, actually learning how to play this game. It looks like so much, but it's really not that hard to mm -hmm. learn how to play. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You put your worker out, you get a thing, and then you maybe fill a contract. Yeah, you know, and, and it's uh, what a satisfying experience, experience, you know, for a little bit of a longer game, but it didn't feel long to me because I'm immersed right. in this. I think my biggest knock on it was that the app, it, it's got narration for parts of it, but not. Yeah, it like it that was weird. The first part, and then stop. Like, okay, well, I guess I got to read the rest of this yeah. paragraph. And, and, and like, we talked about <laughs> in the pain the review, by the word. <laughs> we talked about the review. I assume because it is possible. Option one, less likely to me. Uh, it's not finished yet. They'll finish it in the next couple months. They sure. just needed to get the game out. Right, because the app, the app yeah. was stalled. Like, the game was out in, in out, backers' hands. And the app wasn't ready. Right. But I would rather that have a good app than a same. bad app to ruin the your experience sure. with the game. Well, and what I was going to say was less likely to me, what I think is more likely is the parts that are always going to come up in every scenario are narrated and the parts that are, like, dependent on your choice and stuff sure. are unnarrated likely, because yeah. they would have to narrate so much to cover That's everything. Right, so give me the foreteller version then. Right. Where they Correct. just narrate so everything. Like, yeah, I'd pay two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, or whatever. Oh, I'd pay three bucks. Oh, wow. You gracious man, <laughs> Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, di I think I dished out ten bucks for, like, the Bard song. You know, sure, I want to play Bard song. Sure, I want sure. the narration and stuff. But I would pay some extra money to yeah. have a fully immersive, the, the yeah. fully narrated version for sure. of the uh, My Father's Work. Pay me, I'll do it for you. Oh. <laughs> that's that's one. I, it was close to fifty. I feel like one play wasn't enough for me to decide how much I actually like mm -hmm. that game. Mm -hmm. And there's and other deeper games I put on my list that I only played once, but this one I just it could go really high with yeah. more plays. I just mm -hmm. wasn't ready to sure. And again, the decision. components, right? Yep. I mean, we love oh, co good yeah. components. They're, I think uh, all of us word. love, and they're some of the best some components. Of the, yeah, they are a new a bar, um, for sure. Components. And that's the standard, like, not... Well, it's a really expensive game, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing. <laughs> what I really like about that game is um, not just, you know, as you said, how the town can change, but how they do it. Here's a binder. Yeah. In all fairness, that was in my top mechanics. I think a, a ring binder is just put it in every freaking game now. Mm. It always makes the game uh, better. Some Ryan Lockett games have that. Yep. No, like, I know. What an interesting um, way to do I, your I board, about your game board. Forgotten Waters Forgotten recently. Waters. Tale, uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights has it, which means um, mm. Smursh. Smursh has it. Like, uh, Yeah, it always makes the game better. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's great. Um, Crap. There was one 31. other thing I wanted to say, oh, but who cares? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep. number 31 you were going to say. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so who cares? Though? My, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. My number 31 is I like... I don't know how to say this because I, I like games. like simple engine building games that are still really like like tactical, but that aren't um, clunky. Like I don't like Gizmo. Gizmo okay. has oh, I like way too much going on. Mm -hmm. I get confused every time I'm playing it. Like oh, wow. from 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 my own like engine. Quite a bit. I'm just like too. there is too much going on I do here. Too. Um, and so my number 31 is It's a Wonderful World. I think that that does yes. a great middle ground. I think that there is good strategy there. <laughs> you get a good feeling from the engine building. But then also, it's not like super clunky. It's very basic. Once your engine's done, you don't really have to do anything with it. Like it's, 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 it's doing its own thing. And really, I don't know. Even engine building is like a, it's more like. I don't even know how to describe it. It's Almost like, like a, a tableau building, yeah, tableau building with a discount collection, but yeah. like, not really second, like, like I don't know. It has a mis, mi, mixed match of different things. But anyway, um, mm. it's in like a uh, what is that? A utopian dystopian, dystopian. dystopian future. Um, almost a. It's a matter of perspective. What is that? Um, <laughs> Uh, Sky Captain in the world of tomorrow. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. It yeah. does remind you of yeah, that. Yeah, it has like that kind of look to it. And um, I, I just really like the look and feeling of this engine building game. I was truly surprised when it was this high. And this was almost another one like Potion Explosion where I was like, 
should I scoot it down a bit? Like uh-huh. I just, uh, but every time I play it, I have a great time. And also it's not too expensive. <coughs> um, so I again know. on the new to me, cause I know this game has been out right. for a minute. Like this game blew me away. I played it. I don't I think we played it at origins and I played it for the first we time. We played it at uh, their apartment. Yeah. At their, yeah. their hotel room the at, hotel. at origins. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. just <laughs> like, this game is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like I, I love it. And we it. It played it with away. big players. Yeah, count, we played six like, or seven yeah, people. Yeah, and it I felt think. great. Jason mm-hmm. and Katie, me, you, Pat, Julia. I mean, it was, man, it was really good. I really love this game. I finally got to play it at the last Julia Con and really liked it. I again, I like games with combos and how you can daisy chain your production yeah. engine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to build this one and right. then that'll produce cubes that'll allow me right. to build and my next building. It's interesting. That, and that's what I'm saying is that's the engine building part really is just the the cards you're making then make other cards. Right. But that's it. It's not like a crazy deep engine building. No. It's just that but then that is how you get points and everything too. But it's too, such so. a, like you said, it's a simple elegant, yeah. very straightforward, easy to teach but still like a lot of crunch there to like, or satisfying decisions, right, that right. you're making. So. And I really want to try it's a wonderful kingdom but first of all it's so it's only two players right? yeah. it's a two player version and it's somehow more expensive <clears throat> really and i don't understand <laughs> I don't. that so i, I just haven't either. made the jump yet for mm-hmm. that it looks really cool i love the theme oh my goodness i love that theme but i don't know so I said my theme of today was Lord, so we're going to continue with that theme. Oh, here he goes. Now, before I go into that and before Dan kills himself, <laughs> I actually I actually made, I mean, multiple adjustments to this list. But had I not made any adjustments, I'll just tell you, because this will be at least a week or two from now, that if I made no adjustments, we would have had a crossover on the exact number for It's a Wonderful World. Oh, man. oh wow. So you got to wait a couple weeks, but uh. it's coming. Instead, Dan is going to be extremely disappointed when I talk about how much I love Lords of Vegas, baby! Woo! Woo! Roll them oh bones! <laughs> this Garbage. Does, I, I get the comparison to Foundations of Rome because you're eh. trying to acquire, you know, these properties that are on specific locations. With like letters and numbers on them? Um, no, but the way that the ownership can change is completely the ownership different. Yeah, changes that is very, cool very differently. I like this theme better. Uh-huh. I like the player well, action more. Mm-hmm. I like how you can roll and totally right? change ownership. Yes. All the casino, like you said earlier, high die wins. Single highest die results. So I could be rolling three and Bob could be rolling one. But how if he awesome, rolls the six, he takes control of the whole casino. How awesome is it when you are like, like I'm in this, I'm in this casino. You and Bob are each in it, and you've got multiple spots. I've just got one spot, and I rolled like a four, and you guys each roll a six, and now you've got to have a roll off, and then you each roll like a three and a two, and now <laughs> I'm in control. Like as the dust settles, I and it's the like, captain now. oh, I, I, I guess this is my casino now. Everything that was just he doesn't I like this game. Love this. How game is that? So much. That's just so. And again, it's because thematically, it's gambling. Sure. Yeah, right? it is. But that's what I hate about it. Yeah. I don't like that theme. And then you're literally just like. Oh, I did nothing to deserve this. I put oh. no work into it, and I'm going to win because of I it. did a lot yeah. of work to I get there. That. You had that one die in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the up expansion is fantastic. It's really you know, good. Yeah, it is really good. I will never not play with that expansion. Same. Though. I like how you can just be, you know, a, a couple million away from being able to do something big. You're like, well, I don't want to just end my turn. I'm going to go gamble at Tim's casino. Uh-huh. And then you roll a die, and then Tim can decide to either he's Cover the house, the he can match it, or he cannot, in or, which case I won't win yeah, as much money. Like, oh, I no, need, no, you still win the money, you just get it from the he bank. He loses less. He loses that's it. right. Yeah. That's right. I, that's my favorite part of the game. I could, like, <laughs> when Tim oh, loses more money. I need, <laughs> no, no, just the interacting with each other's casino. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, like, well, it's like, uh, oh, I need money too. So. Right, yeah, so you try to risk it to do gain I risk that it, money. Or do, yeah, because I want more of it. Because it's like, well, actually, if I get all five million, that he is gambling here. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there were could, multiple times where I was like, I really edge. need that thing, and I'm too short. So yeah, I'll match you because then, like, <laughs> if I accidentally win here, yeah. I get the card I need that I was not planning. Yeah. I'm a turn yeah. ahead now, right? Yeah. So I, I do like That's that. Gambling is yeah, fun. That is, uh, man. They give it's just fun. <laughs> like I just really enjoy playing it, and it has strategy and a lot of player interaction. Yeah, add in that gambling theme, it yeah. just works so well. Um, I had been wanting to play this for years. I finally did at the first Julia con and we played it twice that weekend. Yeah. And when you're doing one of those like all weekend cons, you yeah, don't yeah. expect to be able to play a game Same twice. Yeah. And, like we're like, Oh, we're playing this again. You know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny though, because you were with the right group of people because it's like, Oh, I kind of like to play this again. Yep. 
you okay. know, as you know, Bob and I are down to play Lords of Vegas yeah, yeah. anytime. But that cost per play down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a lot lower than yours. That's true. And so on my list, yes, Lords of Vegas is better than Foundations of Rome. Case closed. Well, thank no. you. Well, um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, file for an appeal. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> no, it's and I feel like they are. I understand what you're saying with the comparison, but I also think that the games are way different. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the terms are different. There's some there's similarities. To be different, but, but sure, they, you're they, playing they on a board. Feel similar yeah. to me. <laughs> Again, similar. to me, it's like that's ridiculous. To me, it is like Underwater Cities, Terraform Mars, though, where they're not the same games. Most things are different, but I get the exact same feeling sure, when I play them. Sure, sure. And, and I just prefer. Yeah, them. I get yeah. the complete opposite game feeling when I play it. One, I have fun, and one, I don't. Hey, so. if you want to roll dice at, and foundations, then give me all of your money. You can. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I'll have allow it. the same amount of fun. Yeah. You're like, oh, this sucks. It almost like someone just... takes your objective you've been working all game. Yeah. Take it away from you. Yeah, it's pretty awful. Place it with something you understand you if complete. you hadn't done that, he'd like the game. No, I don't like, think so. Would def- it, would de- it, it definitely knocked it down a full point. It, de- it definitely knocked <laughs> down at least a full point. It'd be <laughs> a, a six. six I was rating yeah, had I not done that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd give it a six instead of a five. Yeah. Okay. Is that Bob That Bob influence? It does. Well, it was just because it was you. All right, that is that is uh, forty through thirty one. Let's yep. uh, let's each go through uh, yep. our list real quick one last time. Just sure, top to bottom, Bobby, yep. get it going. Top to bottom. So, Ark Nova, Venice, Trudvang Legends, The Artemis Project, Gutenberg, Karuba, Monumental, Long Shot the Dice Game, Genotype, a Mandalan Genetics Game, and Twilight Inscription. Nice. So uh, Bob's theme, by the way, for his list was words he can barely pronounce. Yes, <laughs> it was. It was a lot of a lot of uh, mush mouth in that one. Yeah, no doubt. No I think doubt. He was choreographing a lot of civish stuff. There. I was. <laughs> and he had to use some sciencey this, words. That's there. right. I think at the end of all of these lists, we'll go through like the top uh, made the top. Oh yeah, made up words. good call. Yeah. Yeah. Top made up words. Okay, so my uh, number forty <laughs> is uh, Blood Rage, mm-hmm. then Blood on the Clock Tower, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Awesome. Treasure Island, then Descent, Journeys in the Dark, that's second edition, Tammany Hall, Oceans, Twilight Imperium, Thunder Alley, and My Father's Work. Mine was Planet Unknown, Abomination, The Heir of Frankenstein, Arctic Scavengers, Time Stories, Architects of the West Kingdom, Scythe, U-Boot, Vast, The Crystal Caverns, Underwater Cities, and It's a Wonderful World. Yeah. Lords of Waterdeep, Decrypto, Steampunk Rally, Coimbra, A Feast for Odin, Terraforming Mars, Foundations of Rome, Planet Unknown, Lords of Hellas, and Lords of Vegas. Man, do you think we should just like do our whole, like the rest of our list just like that? Like, the, yeah. Yeah, 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 that'd really sum it up really quickly. Yeah, it would be a real short video. Yeah, that'd be garbage. It's too much. <laughs> Let me sum up. <laughs> uh, so I asked this last time, last video, and he hinted to it at the beginning of this one. Let us know what your favorite game from each of our list today were. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, that's interesting to me. So I've, list four games, one from each list. I think my favorite game from Mike's list, or no, wait, whose list? Twilight Inscription. Who had Twilight? Bob. Bob's list. That's my favorite game from your list. Yep. But it's because I have it rated way higher. Yeah. That checks, <laughs> checks out. out. <laughs> uh, but no, guys, hopefully this has been as fun for you as it has been for us. At least half as fun. Yeah. I don't know if there was enough Star Wars-iness going on today. Probably Ooh. not. You're really having fun with those, huh? Yeah. I am. We didn't get very Sudoku-y either. Well, what's mm. going to be weird is that, so like know, last week we had a Star that's Wars. That's true. Yeah. Yes. And then this that's week there's a Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> so now will we have a Star Wars next week? Because I'm not going to have a Star Wars for a while. Uh, ooh, that's ooh. a good question. Yeah. No, I'm not going to have a Star Wars for a long, long time. Yeah. Is there, are we going to have a week without Star Wars? We might no, have a Star Wars. I okay. don't have a Star Wars game on my top of it. Okay. Dude. Now. Are you even Star Wars? Next list. You're not I Star Wars enough. <laughs> I got you next list. Okay. All right. All right. So Sounds then, good. Bob, you got to update Annie then after that. <laughs> we'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling. It, well, and, and again, I'm really interested to see if we hit on crossover on the exact same number. Yeah, I'm waiting for all. He messed we were almost. so close. So close. Because mm-hmm. yeah. there's some good ones. There will definitely be some. I mean, more crossover. And but. It's a Wonderful World would be my favorite one off of your list. And then Lords of Vegas is my favorite one. Oh, sure. no. Lords Bottom of Hellas is my favorite one off of your list today. One of those Lords games. So, yeah, it was, well, it's the Lords theme. So, go with God, I guess. Oh, God. Wrong Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys, for the board game rundown, I've been Tim. Bob. That was Mike. Daniel. <laughs> he yells. See you next time.